How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here today looking at games published by Taito for the NES. 26 games total, a lot of games to cover in this video. We're just going to get right into it. Arkanoid's a favorite of mine because one of my favorite Atari games was Breakout. Breakthrough? No, it was called Breakout. That's how much I loved it, huh? Simple concept taught me about angles where the ball comes down and you have to ricochet it back to the bricks to break them. Sometimes you just have to hit it once, they go away. Sometimes you have to hit it multiple times until they go away. And although Breakout to me was a pretty perfect game back in the day, what I loved about this one is it took it a step further by giving you options and items that you can get. Some of the pieces drop down, some of the items drop down, and you can get like a longer ricochet bar. You can get um, the multi-ball, which is uh, always fun. To me, the best thing on here was the laser. Oh my goodness, you could actually ricochet the ball and shoot lasers like <laughs> at the things. Unfortunately, I would always die getting the laser because A, I wanted it, or B, I was too busy shooting the things out of the way to remember where the ball was. And oh, the joy of getting that sweet spot where you get it right through the very top and it starts bouncing up against the ceiling and the top part and you get in a, clearing a bunch of them all at once. That's, man, that's one of my favorite feelings in video games. Arkanoid, an absolute classic. One of my favorites. I'm giving this one an A. Bubble Bobble is one of these staple NES games of all time. Although it's based on the arcade game, to me, this NES version of Bubble Bobble is the staple version. Like, I look at the arcade game, it's like it's almost like the NES version it ramped up. I played so much of the NES version, to me, that was what Bubble Bobble was. And what a fun game. Puzzle platformer, you shoot the bubbles, capture the enemies, you pop them, collect the points when they turn into fruit or vegetables or cake or something weird, you know? Your little power-ups in each level, too. Sometimes you can get the bubbles to shoot faster, farther, uh, shoes make you run faster, there's other things to clear off the entire screen all at once. And it was a great two-player game too, with like a ton of levels, over a hundred of them. To me, the only downfalls I can think about Bubble Bobble are you need two players to get the best ending. You can beat it as a one player, but you have to get the good ending, you have to play it with two players, because that last level where you have to like, you know, capture the one item and then go through the door, you can't do it on one player. And the music, as much as I love the music, and it's all done in the key of C, so it's easy to play on the piano without any black keys or anything, it'll get on you after a while. <laughs> <laughs> but it's in it's forever engraved in my head. Actually, maybe that's not such a bad thing. I don't know. And the graphic from Bubble Bobble makes a cameo appearance in almost all of my videos. I'm giving Bubble Bobble an S. It's it's awesome. Bubble Bobble Part 2, it's funny, I remember in the late 90s, I remember seeing Bubble Bobble Part 2 at a place called Nielsen's in Richland, Washington. And I was like, that's a fake. That's a bootleg. That's not a real game. I've never heard of that game. It's not a real game. 60 bucks? I'm not paying for that. Well, man, little did I know, it is a real game. <laughs> and, and $60 was the going price for the game back then. Goes for a little bit more money now. It's one of those late release NES games from Taito. And Taito actually had several games that came out later in the NES lifespan. And this is one of them. And it plays like Bubble Bobble. It looks a little different. I don't know. It just, it just, to me, it doesn't have that same charm, even though the graphics are better. There's a couple of, like, slowdown glitches and stuff like that. So it's more of the same. It just doesn't feel the same. It's still a great game, though. I'm still giving it an A. It's just not Bubble Bobble. Demon's Sword is the sequel to The Legend of Kage. Uh, it just, it plays kind of the same. And we'll, we'll talk about that later on in this video. We're just going alphabetical right now. Plays the same idea. You can jump super high and super far like the old Kung Fu films. I love that about this game. You can climb the trees and jump off of those. You got your shurikens. You got your little sword thingy that you can twirl. In this game, you collect items like keys, which will open up the doors. You can fight the bosses and get the things that you need. And you're trying to create the Demon Sword, this giant multi-pronged sword which seems a little impractical, but looked kind of cool for me back in the day. Demon Sword's okay. I mean, it's like, I'm gonna give it a D. There's a little bit to this game, and I come back to it every once in a while, but I'm usually good for about one level. And then it's like, I have beaten it before way in the past, but it's like, I don't know, man. There's, there's better stuff out there. Dungeon Magic is another one of these type of games. Now, I love platformers, action games, puzzle games, shooters, beat-em-ups. These kind of games, man, I want to get into them. Because it's, I mean, before we had Skyrim, we had this. This is what we had. And I want to get into them. But this one, it's it's missing something. It's actually missing a lot. A map, for one. <laughs> I, guess, I, guess, I guess that might help, too. And you walk around, and you talk to people, and you get your stuff. And you can learn stuff too, like magic. You go in the dungeons, dungeon magic, right? No, it's it's way more involved than all that. Um, you, you start out in your town, you can talk to the townsfolk and all that. It's a little weird because when you see the perspective, it looks like there's an opening, but the opening is just because the wall hasn't been generated there yet. So that kind of throws you off a little bit because there's nothing there, but then something on the other side. So when you get close enough, maybe there's still a wall there. But when you leave town, then you can find enemies and fight them and... Uh, not my style of game. I'm giving this one a D. 
And I'm giving it a D because, again, these are based on my own opinion. Elevator action, classic arcade game, and plays very well on the NES. I like this game a lot. It's called Elevator Action because you're in this tall building at the very top working your way down, man. And you gotta go in these red doors, pick up the top secret files, and then make it to your uh, getaway car at the bottom of the uh, tower here. Now you can still jump and you can still shoot your gun. Uh, your bolts move super slow, but fortunately the enemy's bolts do too, so you can jump over them or find a way to dodge them or move out of the way, hop inside one of these doors if you need to, right? I love that you could shoot the light fixture and all the lights would go out. I thought that was kind of a fun little thing you could do. And all while riding these elevators, and sometimes you can use the elevators to your advantage. You can actually take an elevator and, you know, crush one of the enemies below you. Incredibly huge fan of elevator action. The sequel on the Sega Saturn, that's even better. Uh, but this arcade version elevator action for the NES, I'm giving it an A. This is the Flintstones, the rescue of Dino and Hoppy. And it's funny, when it first came out, I'm like, the Flintstones? You're gonna make a game based on like a cartoon from the 60s or something? But the game, I'm telling you, if you've never played the NES game for the Flintstones, it's very well done, like incredibly well done. As you can see, it plays like, you know, an action platformer. You can climb up the side of the walls. You can use your club. You can charge up your club for a more powerful shot. You can get items. You see these coins. These coins, think of the hearts from Castlevania. That's what these coins are for when you use your items. It has stages, it has bosses. These are little mini stages where you can play basketball for some reason. <laughs> and if you do well in basketball, uh, you'll get an extra item. Why they didn't choose bowling, I'll never know. But I mean, they could have made a Flintstones basketball game just like this. And it probably would have sold pretty well too. But you know, what are you gonna do? This Flintstones game's very, very good. I'm, I'm giving this one an A. And then we have the Flintstones the surprise at Dinosaur Peak. This one is top tier in price and has been for a long, long time. Super late release on this game. I actually used to own this game before I traded it away. I found it in some uh, some retro game store in Chile. Got a huge, got an amazing price on it because the the label was kind of ripped. And it plays again, just like the other Flintstones game, extremely well. Now I think I like the gameplay of the first one more. This one plays very similarly though. So if you likes the first one, you're gonna love the second one. And both play incredibly well. I don't even need more, need what else I need to say about that. <laughs> the Flintstones, the surprise at Dinosaur Peak, I'm giving this one an A as well. It's really good. It's not worth the going price right now, but you have other means to play it. Check it out. There are two Indiana Jones and the Last Crusades. One of them is from Ubisoft, and we'll talk about that maybe in another video. This is the one from Taito. And this one, man, I wanna love it. I don't, though. I love Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. It's one of my favorite trilogies. The original trilogy is one of my favorite movie series of all time. Not only does it have some cool cutscenes, I do like that it gives you a couple of choices. Like, you know, do you wanna go over here and do this, or do you wanna go over there and do that? Um, there is an action part, like when you first start. Let's just talk about when you first start the game. Um, you can go on a boat and fight the enemies that way. And this part looks and feels a lot like a, as if Pitfall was on a boat. You're just <laughs> punching and kicking guys. You can run and kind of do this weird triangle jump off the wall. It's, I mean, could be better. And then there's a puzzle element where you have to solve the puzzle by sliding the tiles around. And I'm actually very good at the tile sliding puzzle game, usually. And when I say usually, I mean because in this gameplay footage, I didn't get it right. Now, I don't know what I didn't get right about it, but I didn't get it right. Like maybe the empty piece was supposed to be on the other side, I don't know. But either way, I failed. It didn't tell me what I should have done in the first place. Um, it's as cool as it looks and as fun as it should be, and maybe you like it more than I do. I'm giving it a D. The action part, even if it didn't have the puzzle parts, the action part, it's just not great. Well, we have the Flintstones, so why not have the Jetsons? And we do have the Jetsons on the NES. And this one, man, it doesn't play as well as the Flintstones games, but it's still pretty cool. I mean, it has to be it has to be from the same company. So the action part in this game, think Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. You find these blocks everywhere. So you can pick up the blocks and toss them and that's how you defeat these enemies. And the enemies are usually robots and stuff like that because it's the Jetsons, of course. And I do like how your jump is, they just said like, hey, you know, he can't jump, so he just has a jetpack. <laughs> that's his jump. <laughs> it was a game I found in the late 90s for super cheap when EB games and software, etc., were liquidating their Nintendo stock for super cheap. I was able to grab it back then, played it. It's fun, it's, it's all right. I'm giving it a B, it's good. Kickmaster is one of those games that if you didn't play it back in the day, because it, it, it came out a little bit past the golden couple of years of the NES, for me anyway. And so that little later area, it's one of those games that if you pick it up and play it now, 
you're just like, oh my god, where's this game been my whole life? It's it's one of those great, awesome, fun action Nintendo games. It just kind of flies under the radar. It wasn't part of many people's memories growing up playing the NES, but it's such a fun, such a great game. The name is a little lame. I'll be honest with you. Kickmaster, seriously. When you play the game, I mean, yeah, you're kicking everyone. Like, you know, Sweet Chin Music is your main weapon of attack. <laughs> you just kick everyone and everything. As you notice, when you kill an enemy, it drops three items and you choose what you want. Do you want more experience points? Do you want your magic, health, whatever? So you can kind of choose how you want to upgrade yourself along the way by defeating these enemies, by taking down these enemies. It's kind of cool. The bosses are fun. The graphics were great for the NES. Uh, I thought this, the music was fine for the NES. And this, this game is great. It's, um, I'm giving this one an A. It was called Kiwi Craze for the NES. You might know it better as New England's New England, New Zealand story. <laughs> Sorry, uh, this game. Uh, you play as a little, a little kiwi, bro, a flightless bird. However, flying comes into play more than you'd think because you can find things later on that can help you fly. But I mean, you go around and you shoot the enemies, and it's it's a fun one of these kind of games. It's a, I guess I'd call it a puzzle platformer because I mean the levels are super short. No, it's it's a platformer. We can call it that. Fun game, tons of stages. Uh, like I said, there are times where you can uh, knock out a writable thing, and then you can ride that as your writable thing to help you beat the level. The levels are short and tight, and I love that about this game. And it's just um, it's just fun, and it's cute, and I love the graphics. And this game is also an A. Legend of Kage, we saw Demon Sword, which is the second one earlier in this video. Now we have Legend of Kage, which is okay. I, of course, I called it Legend of Cage, like everyone else, I didn't know. And again, I loved those uh, old school Hong Kong martial arts action films where you'd have the people like running up trees and jumping super far and fighting in the air and stuff like that. And this has a little bit of that going on with this game. You got your throwing stars and you got your little sword thing that you twirl around and you kill the enemies and you move on to the next stage trying to, uh, you know, save the girl. Short game. I remember my next door neighbor was super excited. I think it was the first game he ever beat by himself. So he was like super excited about that. And it's it's a D. D is good. I, I still come back to it every once in a while just to look at it. But it's it's a D. <laughs> Little Samson is a game I remember renting at Crazy Mike's video once upon a time, and I uh, this was uh, Super Nintendo was already out, but this was like oh this still looks pretty cool. I'll check it out. Had had we have known back then what we know now. We would have bought all the stock, of course, and th but then it wouldn't be the price where it is now, <laughs> okay, right? And for all the right reasons. It's actually a very, very, very good uh, platformer. I like the fact that it has, um, there's Little Samson, but there's four playable characters in this game. You play through all four of them in their stage, and that kind of shows you what, what each one can do. Like, Little Samson himself shoots these bells and can climb up walls. Perfect. There's a dragon that can fly. And when I say fly, I mean can just kind of float, kind of like how the princess can do in Super Mario 2, but can go for quite a while. And has these uh, the shots, like fireballs, you can charge up and shoot them out too. There's a golem that um, is a little bit slower, but has like this kind of extendo arm that can also um, punch upwards. Fun. And the mouse, which may be my personal favorite, uh, can drop these bombs and drop a, a few bombs in a row that'll explode after a couple seconds, um, but can also climb up the walls, climb on ceilings and all that. A lot of fun. So when you're playing the game later on, after you go through all their stages, you can kind of use the characters in the different stages and all that. Uh, fun game. Um, seriously, I mean, I know you probably know it for the price, and it does uh, demand a high price, but if you have other ways to play it, it's really fun and really worth checking out. It's, it's one of the better NES games. I'm also giving this one an A. Operation Wolf, fantastic game in the arcade because you have the gun. You actually have a gun, the, the two player next to each other, and you're just shooting fools. Uh, it's a you know, rail shooter going side by side, killing the enemies, killing the uh, helicopters and stuff like that. And on the NES, it's still good. It's okay. Uh, you can use your zapper if you'd like. Great game before its time. A little rough to come back to now. I'll give it a C. It's fine. Um, I played it more on the controller, although the, the zapper did work really well. It's it's a, it's a great memory to have. Panic Restaurant, another, I'm telling you, Taito, the, the high price games, they stuck with Nintendo to the very end, the Taito. And thank you for that. And Panic Restaurant is another great game on this list. Fun game, love the graphics, love the, uh, it's a little platformer, you play as the cook, the chef, with this frying pan as a weapon, and you can upgrade to better weapons along the way too. The enemies are like vegetables and food and fruit and stuff like that. I mean, it's a great, great game, love this game. I also, this was a game I also rented back in the day. I was like, man, I gotta check this game out. And I'm so glad I did. And I did end up owning a copy much later on, but it was when it was starting to rise in price. I don't have it anymore though. Another game, man, um, if you have means to play it, 
it's worth checking out. Not a very long game, I remember. It didn't take me very long to beat it. Um, I want to see I beat it the first time I played it, and it was it's it's fun, and I'll give it an A. Parablade is the perfect game to play if you're like, you know what, I want to play Mega Man, but I only want to use the boomerangs. It's, it's a little like that. Okay, it's not exactly like that, but it's still pretty fun. You get to choose your level that you want to go to. Your Power Blade is these boomerangs, I guess, that you're uh, flinging at these enemies, and it's a very well done game. It's okay. It has a nice, I remember it having a nice NES difficulty. Like, it's a little bit more of a challenge than some typical games, but still enough that you're able to go through it. And the fact that you can choose your own level and all that, Gotta give it up to Power Blade for sure. It's missing something about it. I don't, I don't know if it's because I keep comparing it to Mega Man. Maybe I wish like you could do m more in it, but it's fine. It's a B for me. It's a solid B. It's, a, it's great. It's, is it a? No, I'll, I'll give it a B. Power Blade 2, more of the same. Graphics are a little bit more updated. Uh, where you can choose your levels. You can still choose your levels, but you're on this bike and you go through the things. Sometimes it takes too long. I mean, just, just, let, just let me choose the level, right? <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to show me the animatics about it. Still a neat game, and um, I'll also give this one a B. It's, it's very solid. It's a good, it's a good one. And then we have games like Puznik, of all games. Well, there's a couple of different ways to play this. There's two puzzle modes. One of them is this kind of like, well, as you see here, you just kind of have to match them up, I guess, and then close them out. You just have to know which ones you're going to drop on top of what, so you can make room for the other ones that you have to connect. Make the things eliminate, move on to whatever's coming up next. And then the other mode is the gravity mode, and this one's a little bit more interesting, I think, where you have to choose what, where the gravity falls, and you have to like move those around, and they all have to connect. And you can only do so many pieces, or so you can only do so many moves before it's game over, and you have to try again. There's gotta be a, a solution of a direction push to make all these things go away. Two modes of gameplay, both of them are like, Meh, like mediocre-ish puzzles. I'll give it a D. And then there's Kicks, which is a fun puzzle game. I actually like this game a lot. The NES version, it's a little slow for me, and uh, there are better versions of Kicks out there. Um, I played Kicks on the Game Boy a lot. And from Taito, you'll find out later on that there are other versions of it, like Volified. I've talked about Volified on this video before for the TurboGrafx-16. Love that version of it. There's also Super Kicks. Oh, there's another one, but let's talk about Kicks for the NES. Now you have your A and B buttons. One of them moves you faster, the other one moves you slower. The slower one will get you more points if you create an area. And what you're trying to do in the game, if you're just like, what's going on? I don't even know, is you need to block in the enemy, this enemy kicks monster thing, whatever it is, these lines. And you have to fill up so much percentage of the room for you to move on to the next level. And my favorite thing to do is to kind of block him in a corner and then just like slowly move over and just like clear out a bunch of screen all at once. I love that. I love this game a ton. The NES version is just a little bit too slow for me and a little awkward with the D-pad too. I'm giving this one a C. Now we have Rainbow Islands, which is the story of Bubble Bobble 2. Now there's a Bubble Bobble part two that came later but this one, they're, I think they're just trying to find a way to like, hey, it's called Rainbow Islands, but we still want to use that Bubble Bobble name to sell some more copies. Did it work? I don't know. But it does have that Bubble Bobble feel, kind of. Instead of blowing bubbles, you toss rainbows. And the rainbows can act as a bridge. You can also jump on the rainbows and uh, have them co collapse down. You can collapse a bunch of rainbows all at once to defeat the enemies below you. You can also, you know, just hit the rainbow into the enemy. That'll kill the enemy too. Fun game, decent game. Uh, not much of a challenge on this game, but Still kind of fun to play through. I'll at least give this one a B. Renegade, I want to like. I really do. The The controls are a little weird at, for me at first, where you have uh, the A and B buttons. Uh, one attacks one direction, one attacks the other direction, much like Double Dragon 2 did. But it's just kind of monotonous. It's just like the same enemies come up on you and they always gang up on you and you just have to punch them and kick them and throw them and you know, just take care of them. I mean, that's what a beat-em-up is anymore. I mean, this was maybe one of the trailblazers for beat-em-ups. Still a little rough to play. I'm actually giving this one a D. It's probably worth more than that, but man, it's, nah, that's good. I'm, I'm okay with giving it a D. Tons of fond memories playing Sky Shark in the arcade. We had a Red Robin in my town growing up. I mean, we still do, but back in the day, they had video games in the back room. I could count how many times on one hand I actually ate at Red Robin growing up, but I went to the back room all the time to play video games. They had Sky Shark there. 
There was one time I went in there and the machine glitched when they turned it on and it had like 99 free credits on it. So I just stayed there and just played Sky Shark for like a while until all the credits were gone. And I'm so glad I did because when it came out for the NES, I was like, oh yeah, I don't have unlimited credits anymore. This game is super hard. And not that it's hard hard, it's just unlike 1942, 1943 and other games like this, um, you don't get the weapon upgrades as often as you would like. And when the airplanes come through that you're supposed to shoot to get those weapon upgrades, then there's like other people shooting at you and getting in your way. It's a pretty difficult game if you're trying to rush through it. You can't rush through it on this one. I mean, you're always scrolling, but you have to be, yeah, a lot of patience involved with Sky Shark. Still a fun game. I have a lot of fond memories with this game and I'm giving this one a C. I know it could be better, but it also should be better. It's a C to me. There's Target Renegade, like Renegade, is it the sequel to Renegade? I mean, it's another one of those games that wants to be a Double Dragon, because Double Dragon was so popular. Why wouldn't you want to emulate Double Dragon, right? Now, one thing that this game does that I do kind of like is when you attack and you're holding up, you can do a jump kick, or if you're holding down, you can do like a foot sweep. A couple of other options for attacking anyway, but still, other than that, it's a knockoff Double Dragon that's not all that great. I'm also giving this one a D. But the very first enemy you fight is a person on a motorcycle. That's, <laughs> you save that for like halfway through the second level, at least least, but I don't know. Toki is fantastic. I loved playing Toki at the arcade in Seaside, Oregon, that giant arcade they have there. I look forward to it every year. I loved this game so much. Now, they also made Toki for the Sega Genesis. That's different. The NES one is based on the arcade game and done extremely well. Uh, you play as this monkey. I mean, it's, it's, you know, you get whatever happens, you get this magic spell. Congratulations, you're now this uh, ape going around uh, <laughs> trying to save the girl. And you spit fireballs for some reason. Sure, why not? Cute game with the weapon upgrades and the items you can pick up. The levels are creative enough. Uh, I'm okay with that and I think it's just a really really fun game and done very well on the NES. I'm also giving this one an A. A lot of A's from Taito on this list. Wrath of the Black Manta was, man, there was a time I was really, really digging this game. I was really into it. I was suggesting it to all my friends. I was letting them borrow my copy of the game because I wanted them to play it. It plays a lot like Shinobi from Sega, but this one has its own little twist on it. It has these little upgrades that you can do. Now, it starts off with a few things that you can do. For your upgrade, you can throw a fireball, a little fire burst and stuff like that. Later on levels, you'll get other things that you can do, a little other magic spells you can pull off, I guess, right? Your ninja magic, if you will. Saving the kidnapped kids, sure. Um, I remember the giant bosses in this game too. Like, it would take up, you know, a lot of the screen. I thought, like, man, that's that's such a cool idea. It plays decent. It, it's a it's a fine game and it's a fun game. I'll give it a B. It's still missing that one thing. I don't know what that one thing is. It's 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 fun and it's it's a great game, um, and it's definitely worth a B. I think it's worth checking out for sure. Tons of great games from Taito for the NES. What a fun, uh, what a fun collection of games. You got John Riggs here once again at your service, taking a look at some great games for the NES. This time, games that were published by Broderbund, and I believe it's pronounced Broderbund because the O has like a line through it, like a stroke. So instead of it being Broderbund, it's Broderbund. So I'm gonna call it Broderbund in this video. I hope that's cool. Broderbund, usually a company known for PC games, computer games, computer software as well. But they made eight games, eight games for the NES. So we're going to check out all eight games on this list. Some of them you've heard of, maybe some of them you haven't, and maybe a couple of them you didn't even know were Broderbund games. You know, or maybe you didn't even know they were on the NES to begin with. And if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for checking me out, even if only for a moment. Make sure you're subscribed. I do at least two videos a week. I love the old school stuff. I like new stuff too. But I'm all about the old school, man. Right up front, we have Battle of Olympus. I love this game so much. Um, it, the difficulty is there, for sure. Uh, but if you loved games like Zelda 2: The Adventures of Link and stuff like that, you're gonna love this game quite a bit. I love Greek mythology, and this game is all about Greek mythology. I mean, like, the bosses in this game are like Medusa, like Cyclops, and so much more, too. Um, so if you're into that, it takes place in ancient Greece. We have to go from place to place and all that. Super fun game. You get your items along the way. Um, I like the fact to uh, speak to like one of the gods or the deities or wh whoever you're talking to. Um, you have to kneel first and then and the two, you have to kneel first to speak to them. You can't just go up to them and hit the button. You gotta kneel first and then hit the button and then they'll come up to you and tell you what you need to do. I love that about this game. It was so fun. The controls are a little loose um, and the difficulty is a little bit higher than it should be. I mean, there's, there's a lot of time in this game where you're just, you know, olive grinding because you got to build up those olives to buy stuff. So, um, you know, if, if, if it wasn't for all that, it may be an S, but I'm going to put it as a solid A. I think it's really neat and I think it's worth checking out. And we go from that to Deadly Towers. I was wondering how long it would take me to cover Deadly Towers on this channel. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, it's not a terrible game, and even though you're probably disagreeing with me right now, um, this game has a lot of merit to itself, because it's an adventure, you can go wherever you want, a little open world-ish. You can money grind. What's the money called? What's the currency called? Is it like, like Lutter or something like that? Looter? I don't remember. Um, but, I mean, it has all the elements that you want in a game, and I think that's why so many people don't like this game, is because it's disappointing, and I don't blame you. This game has so much going on for itself, yet uh, it's so broken. I mean, just like, like when you get hit, you end up like falling or flailing, like, you know, too far out of the way. Um, the graphics are a little simple, even for its time. This game has so much potential, and it kind of dropped the ball on it. And I wish somebody would rehack this game to make it playable. I'd love that. I have a, I have a buddy of mine, Pete, loves this game. He unapologetically, um, unironically loves this game, and it, it cracks me up. But he also likes Super Pitfall. So what does that say? What does that say about Pete? If I'd never played it ever again, it would be an F. But I come back to it every once in a while just to remind myself, and I'm, it has some merit for itself. So I'm at least putting it as a D. Dusty Diamond's All-Star Softball. It's a little bit harder of a baseball game to find for your NES, but if you can find it, I think it's pretty cool. I like the fact that it has a huge roster of people you can play as in this game, but it also is not just people. You can also play as like an ogre, um, or like a demon type character and stuff like that, like where your, ball, like your baseball bat is like a spiked club <laughs> and stuff like that. And all of those things aside, everything else about this game, it also plays like a pretty decent baseball game. And baseball games are usually pretty easy to pick up and play. This is one of those games that's easy to pick up and play. And the fact that it creates this, uh, a roster that you can choose, it's just like, you know, like old school softball. You you pick your team, it's like, I want that one, that one, that one, that one. You know, it's not just like, you know, like which city you do you want. It's just, um, you know, just wherever you want to be. And also very cool, you get to choose where you play your games. So you can play in a dirt pit, you can play in a baseball field, you can play in outer space, stuff like that too. So this game has a lot going on for itself. I think it's pretty fun. I want to put it as a B. The Guardian Legend is one of those games I'm discovering now that a lot of people still haven't played. It was one of those games that growing up, everyone kind of played it. Like it was always there and it's super cool. And, um, but nowadays, uh, especially like with the you know like younger collectors or people who are just getting into like collecting and they don't really have the NES at the time and they're just now discovering games. Uh, the Guardian Legend should be high on that list for games that you should check out. Starts off like a shooter, like a decent vertical shooter, right? It's okay. It's pretty cool. But then um, you transform into a human android something or other, and it goes into that kind of maze view, kind of like the dungeons in Star Tropics in a little way. And then from there you can fight enemies, you can shoot at them, you can pick up your items, you can move on from there. Um, there is, this game has a lot going on for itself, I absolutely love it, and the Guardian Legend, to me, is an S. I think it's super cool. Legacy of the Wizard was one of those games early on that I kept playing even though I had no clue of where I was going. It was just fun to explore. I loved the fact that you can start off with, uh, you can choose your own character. You can play as like the mom, the dad, the brother, uh, the sister, or like the pet dragon looking thing that looks like a little bubble bubble type character. I don't know. Um, I liked playing as that one because you never got hurt from enemies. So you could just kind of go around and walk through them and you could kill them if you wanted to. Um, I like the fact that I think just about every enemy, I think every enemy drops some kind of item, whether it be bread, whether it be magic, so you can use your weapon some more. And different characters can use different items. Um, this game might be a little rough without the instruction manual or some kind of guide, some kind of strategy guide, some kind of walkthrough or something. Um, I've never been able to beat it. Um, I just haven't played it that long, or I haven't played it that seriously, I suppose. But I had a lot of fun just exploring and just walking around and um, just seeing what I could find. You know, the different characters, not only can they use, you know, specific items, but some of the characters, you know, like like the sister can jump the highest. Maybe one of the characters is the strongest. Um, again, another game that has a lot going on for itself. Rough to just play blind, but if you have the manual and if you have some kind of strategy guide, um, I think you'll be okay with Legacy of the Wizard. I think it's worth... I think it's worth playing, and I'm a um, big fan of this game. Um, I'm going to put it as a B. Load Runner is another one of those games that a lot of people have had, a lot of people have played. There's different versions of the game, and I still don't know why I'm supposed to like this game. <laughs> like, I understand how to play it. Um, I just like... It's almost just like a thanks for playing, you know, thanks for trying. And so it's like, I, I always get to the point where, you know, the character comes up to me and I'm trying to, you know, dig the hole so they can fall into it, and then they're too close and they ended up just, you know, killing everything, and 
Oh man, um, this game just kind of lets me down. And I, I keep playing it though, I keep coming back to it. Um, but I don't know why, just kind of, <laughs> this game kind of stresses me out. And the enemies in this game are, are Bomberman, right? I mean, it looks like Bomberman to me. I don't know, it's like it's almost like the same exact sprite that he used for the NES version of Bomberman are the enemies in this game. Um, I mean, honestly, I don't care for this game personally. Um, I don't. I have the nostalgia because I played it back in the day, but I didn't like it back in the day either. So I'm, but I still play it every once in a while. So I'm gonna put it as a D. It's the name of a game I've never had to say out loud. Is it Raid on Bunglian Bay? Bungling, Bungling Bay? Right on Bungling Bay? Is that how I say it? It's one of those games. Yeah, this is from Will Wright, by the way. Um, he made this game before SimCity, and from what I understand, I may be wrong, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but from what I understand, this game was the inspiration, where he was like, I was making a, he's making a game, the helicopter, you fly around, and you're shooting the other enemies and stuff like that and all that, um, but he had the most fun creating the uh, maps, like the towns. He had a lot of fun just like creating like the little, like the islands that had like the buildings and stuff on them. So he made a game based on just the building of buildings, basically. Um, <laughs> and, and that's where SimCity came from. Um, so cool to see that. Um, and even has that kind of look to it too when you're playing it. It's like, oh, this, this looks like it, this looks like a SimCity kind of thing. Um, but other than that, the, the, the game itself, the shooter itself, I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I've tried it. It's okay. Um, it's, you know, not not my style of game, I suppose. Um, I don't think it's that great. Um, I'm also putting it as AD. Splunker was interesting enough, because Splunker was... Um, played like a classic arcade game that was decent. Uh, kind of like a Donkey Kong Underground. It played a lot like a um, Bagman. Bagman was an old arcade game that I loved, and we never got like an NES version of it. So this game reminded me a little bit like that kind of like where you're going down and you can you kind of choose your own path you don't have to get the items if you don't need to but some of the items you'll need because you need to get your oxygen back or something like that it's a game where like if you fall a millimeter too high you'll die so that's kind of annoying that you'll die more from that than anything else um it's fun to explore though it's, it's spelunker it's all about exploring and uh, you know how how far can you go without blowing yourself up i suppose Splunker's decent um i'm putting spelunker as a c And that's my list of Broder Bun games for the NES. Not the most flattering, but with games like The Guardian Legend, uh, Battle of Olympus, Legacy of the Wizard, and more. I mean, you know, it, 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 you know, the positives outweigh the negatives, I think. Feeling you got John Riggs here in a regular series. I love to cover games from a specific company. Today, we're talking about all the great games from Bandai for the Nintendo Entertainment System. 21 games, a ton of variety with Bandai for the NES. We're going to cover them all in this video, and we're going to do that starting right now. Chubby Cherub is the second ever NES game I ever played. The first one being Burger Time. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I didn't even know. I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> in this game. You play as a naked cherub. You play as a chubby cherub. Uh, you can jump, but you can also fly. Why don't you just fly through the whole level? Just eat the little snacks along the way. That'll keep your energy up. Yeah, things like pies and uh, sticky rice on sticks and stuff like that. That's going to keep your energy up for sure. This game is very Japanese to its core. I mean, even the Japanese version you play as a ghost, I think. But this one, the NES one, the one that we got, could have been a black box title. It was the silver box, though. And it's just an interesting, unique kind of weird early game that was available to us growing up. Now you are a cherub, but instead of shooting arrows, you shoot love. You actually shoot these hearts at uh, enemies. And when I say enemies, I mean like dogs. There are times when the level just kind of stops. You have to eat all the things on the screen and then grab the item to go through the rest of the level. And as you make your way through the level, I do also kind of like how the daylight would change. Sometimes it'd be like morning to, you know, brighter outside. It'd go to dusk, it'd turn like red outside and stuff. I mean, there's a little bit of a variety in this game. So it's more, much more than just, you know, play as a weird cherub eating snacks and going to the end of the level. Although that's also totally what this game's all about. The end of the level is you're at these windows and you have to eat all the snacks. When you do so, the window opens up. Sometimes it's an enemy, gotta watch out for that. And then sometimes it's some kid and that's, yay, you won. You move on to the next level. I don't know. It, I'll give it a C. It, I'm, I'm kind of indifferent to this game. Dick Tracy is a game I showcased in an underrated NES games video. I love this game. However, the comments from that video, people do not seem to like this game, but I love it. I mean, the comments were all about like, oh, it's a terrible game. It's a bad game. It stinks. It's the worst. I'm pretty sure there's one comment that actually literally said it is a known bad game. Known? I know it is a good game. 
I don't listen to what other people say. This is my opinion. And I'm looking for that overworld game. And you know, the, the Who Framed Roger Rabbit kind of did this. But I thought it was great because it's like, you know, you got to find out and solve the clues. You got to drive around town. You got to find out where you're going. Talk to somebody. You know, maybe one of the bad guys are going to say, hey, it wasn't me. Talk to this person over here. So you're driving all over town. They're shooting people. Uh, the action part of the game is when you're punching the bad guys. That, that, that part's a little weird, I suppose. But you're either punching the bad guys. If they have a gun, you can shoot them. If they don't have a gun, if you shoot them, then you take damage. So you gotta do the honorable thing by punching them in the face <laughs> and keeping your piece in your pocket, I suppose. Now, it's not a perfect game, but I do like this game quite a bit. I'm actually putting this game as a B. Now, Dig Dug 2 is not some kind of inspired by loosely translated, you know, sequel to a game. This is an actual licensed sequel to Dig Dug. And I kind of like it. It's different from Dig Dug a little bit though, because you still have the ability to inflate and pop these enemies. But then the digging part is you're on an island and you can dig the pieces to make islands fall into the water, clear off a bunch of enemies all at once. It's a fine puzzle game. It's okay. I'm going to give this game a C. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, many people uh, claim this game as one of the worst for the NES. And I would agree because I don't know what I'm doing in this game. Now, there are a few. I've actually met a few people who do kind of like this game. They said, hey, once you know how to play it, it's actually not a bad game. Now, I understand the one part, like, you know, you're just going through town and, you know, you're just minding your own business with other kids dropping bombs and stuff like that. And then after a while, you just turn into Mr. Hyde and then you start walking the other direction for some reason. It's one of those, like, you probably could get into it. And once you learn how to play it, it's probably a pretty decent game. Well, a lot like Jaws, a lot like uh, Friday the 13th. Once you learn how to play it, it's actually a pretty decent game. This game, even if I knew how to play it, I still don't think it'd be a decent game. I'm giving this game an F. Dragon Power for the NES, guess what? It's Dragon Ball. This is the Dragon Ball Famicom game, translated and ported for the NES, but they changed a couple of things, so it's not quite Dragon it's, it's Dragon Ball. I mean, they took the Dragon Ball game. Look at the graphics. Look at the people. See what's going on. Instead of playing as Goku, you play as this little monkey boy or something. And it's admittedly not great, <laughs> even though it's Dragon Power. It's like, at first you're like, oh wait, Dragon Ball, cool. And you're like, eh, all right, well, okay. <laughs> I'm giving this game a D. Dragon Spirit, on the other hand. Well, that's a very great game. It's an overhead shooter, but you play as a dragon. You can either shoot forward or the other button shoots down on the ground, wherever the ground ha happen to be, whether it be the water, the, the island, or something like that. The upgrades in this game give you better firepower, multiple heads <laughs> for extra, you know, <laughs> extra shooting and stuff like that. A lot of, lot of great time playing Dragon Spirit. Huge fan of Dragon Spirit. I'm putting this game right up there. I'm putting this game as an A. Dino Wars caught my attention as just being kind of a unique NES game, in a way. A couple of different gameplay, well, both are kind of the same. There's an action platform part where you play as the guy going through like a factory or a base or something like that, you know. Why you're there, I don't know. But the end result after going through the platforms, the jumping, the climbing, the little elevator lifts, the uh, spike, there's always spikes in games like this. At the end of these stages, then you hop inside your mechanical dino, I guess. And then it turns into a little action part where you play as this kind of robotic, dinosaur uh, fighting off these other little dinosaurs or sometimes bigger dinosaurs and do so by punching. You can also uh, get things to launch like your fist launcher. <laughs> you launch your fist. <laughs> This is, um, oh, uh, this, this game, this game could have been a lot better. I'll put it as a C though. It's not terrible, uh, but man, it's, um, it's something. Frankenstein, another one of those games that kind of flies under the radar when you're talking about Nintendo games. Everyone talks about all the big popular games. This one's not as popular, but it's still really, really good. I think the graphics are great, the sound is fine. Um, it's just, it's cool, kind of a cool game, and it's based on Frankenstein, and Frankenstein's always been kind of a cool monster in my book. The enemies in this game are unique enough. I mean, there's like, there's like trolls, <laughs> and you can pick up weapons too, it's like, so it's not just punching everyone all the time. You can actually pick up a, a, you know, a club, <laughs> start clubbing enemies and stuff like that, and you have other weapons later on too. It's another one of those NES games, man. If you haven't picked it up yet or haven't checked it out yet, now's a good time to check it out. I think it, I think it might be worth your while to give it a look-see. Um, I'll, I'll put this game as a B. And I did a couple of old arcade games on the NES, Galaga being one of them, and Galaga is one of the all-time favorites for many. I'm not as nostalgic or married to Galaga as a lot of people are. I like it, it's okay. I like it. It's still just, it's, it's Galaga. I mean, at this point with the NES, you figure they'd be focusing on 
you know, other arcade games and not games that came out, you know, several years prior. But again, if you liked Galaga, like that old arcade style, it plays just like that. I am indifferent to Galaga. I'll put it as a C. Fun game, great game, don't get me wrong. It's just seen it before. Let's talk about Gilligan's Island, shall we? Well, the actual name is The Adventures of Gilligan's Island, but this Gilligan's Island game, I was actually a little excited to play this game. Now, my brother was a die-hard Gilligan's Island fan. He loved this show. And again, growing up in the 80s, you only had the one TV. So if he was watching it, well, I was watching it too. So, I mean, I liked it okay. And it was apparently just another one of those, you know, it was enough to make a game based on an old TV series. And I guess, why not? Well, I wish they would have given that a second thought. <laughs> this game, is, this game's interesting. Um, I rented it. I did play all the way through it, I beat it, but it was a sluggish challenge. Because you play as the skipper, and Gilligan's at your side, and he's always dropping in the holes, getting caught. Take any game you want, Metal Gear Solid, Bioshock. If you do not like rescue mission games, you will not like this game. Because this entire game, you always have Gilligan at your side, and you're always looking out for him. Now, you have to do your own stuff, too. And each level, or episode in this case, is mostly a fetch quest. Oh, this person needs this, go get this, do this, go there. So much of me wants to play this all the way through one more time. And it will be my last time. Maybe before this year is over. I am giving this game a D because of its frustration. If you didn't have to worry about Gilligan, it'd be a little higher on the list. It might be a C, maybe even a B. No, it'd be a C. But you always have Gilligan with you, this game's a D. It shows promise, it's just not great. We got Bandai Golf, another great golf game for the NES, and I actually kind of like the golf video games, um, especially the 8-bit, 16-bit golf games. I think they're okay to play. I mean, throw them up every once in a while, ha have some fun playing golf. This game, not one of the better golf games for the NES, but it plays okay. I kind of like my golf games to have that behind-the-back view first when you swing the club and all that. This one doesn't so much. I'm going to put it as a D, though, because there are other golf games available for the NES that are much better. Like even Golf from Nintendo, like one of the launch titles. I like that game more than this one. Legends of the Diamond is a great idea because it just takes the best players of all time and puts it into one Nintendo game. Now you don't play as actual teams, you don't play as the Yankees, you don't play as the Mariners, nothing like that. In fact, it's probably for the better you don't play as the Mariners. But you do play as like Babe Ruth, Hank Aaron, and stuff like that too. And it plays like a decent baseball game. It plays the way it should. And when I say that, I mean the, the usual common views that you're used to behind the back when you're pitching. When you're pitching, the, the view doesn't change, throw the ball to a certain base, nothing like that. It keeps the controls the way they should, and I love that about this game. I like baseball games, I'm not the best at them. This one's pretty decent, I'll put this one as a B. Monster Party is such a great, unique game to play. It's so different, it's so interesting, especially by the time when it came out. You play as a boy with a baseball bat, that is your primary weapon, and then you meet um, a dragon named Bert, right? <laughs> and then you're in uh, this weird area. The very first stage sets the whole scene for the entire game, on just how unique and weird and interesting this game is. Especially with these enemies, they, they throw stuff at you. You can swing your baseball bat, hit them back to them, or you can just club them with your baseball bat. That'll take care of them as well. There's like legs sticking out of the ground. When you defeat the enemies, you can get your health back. Um, sometimes you'll get the pill that turns you into the uh, your flying dragon, so then you can fly around the stage and uh, shoot your little beams at enemies and stuff like that. You want to keep playing this game because you never know what the next boss is going to be or look like or do. Uh, that's half the fun for me, this, this game for me, is to see what the next monster is going to be. The first stage is pretty fine, but then later on stages, they're like you're like in the sewers or you're like in some weird cloud island. I mean, it's it's interesting. You, you want to keep playing it because you want to see what's going to happen next. Huge fan of Monster Party. Um, I'm going to give this game an A. There's that muscle tag team wrestling game. And again, for me, huge wrestling fan, disappointed when I finally got this game, I finally played it. I'm like, man, this game, it's not even a wrestling game. You just kind of move around and jump around. You can punch and you can sometimes do like kind of a German suplex and <laughs> sometimes like a pile driver or something. And it is tag team, so you can bring in the other guy who does pretty much exactly the same thing. It's like, it's, no, it's not, it's not a good game. This game's an F. Ninja Kid, like Dragon Power was Dragon Ball, Ninja Kid is based on an anime called Gegege no Kitaro, which I'm sure was a manga as well in Japan. But when they brought it out to America, they changed it up to just make it called, hey, Ninja Kid. All right, good enough. Because when you play the game, you're like, this is kind of a weird, kind of macabre feeling to it, with like the ghosts and stuff like that. And that's what the anime, the original anime is all about. And this one you play as a ninja. I wish they would have just left it the same. And this is even before I even knew what Gegege no Kitaro was. I didn't find that out until like the late 90s. It's fine. It, it, it's a fine game. I'll, I'll, I'll put it as a C. It's all right.
The Rocketeer was like the it movie for a time. It was like, it was the thing that was like, people wanted to watch it, people wanted to see it. It was a dude in a jetpack. Man, that was like the dream thing of the time. And then we get the NES version, which should have been about a dude in a jetpack, and it is. And he doesn't really use it. He's still, it's, it's still an action game. You're still running around shooting enemies and punching them, and it's like, you have a jetpack. Get out of the stage and keep going. And you were able to use your jetpack to an extent, like later on in the game, but it's like, it's a jetpack. Jetpack aside, it's a pretty decent Nintendo game. It really is. I, I think the graphics are fine for the time, for what they were. The cutscenes were really cool. I remember the Nintendo Power issue that had like the big maps all laid out and all that too. So a lot of fond memories with the Rocketeer. The movie was better. The Super Nintendo game was pretty cool. I liked that one all right. The Nintendo one, completely different for the Super Nintendo version. It's its own thing. Reminds me kind of like the action stages of the Dick Tracy a little bit, but not really. I mean, also, I'll, st I'll still put this game as a B. And it's still worth playing. <laughs> Shooting range requires the NES zapper, and thank you for making a game that requires the zapper. Now, unfortunately, because I'm using this footage on a flat screen, I can't get you footage for what the game looks like, because I can't use my zapper on it. However, I am going to do a ranking zapper games video later on. And although those games will be ranked amongst themselves in this game with Bandai, it's a decent zapper game. I'll, I'll put it as a C. Well, there's good old stadium events. Now, you and I have probably played it as world-class track meet, but stadium events was the OG, and that's the one that gets all the money, and Bandai pushing the power pad, or their fitness pad, or whatever they called it, for stadium events. It only has six games. Most of them just involve, you know, running in place. Sometimes you jump. We've all tried to cheat at it by, like, getting on your hands and knees and just pounding it as much as you can. You ever did that? In fact, there <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I should tell you this, but there was a time in my college years where we would regularly have drunk power pad parties where we would uh, drink and play uh, play world class track meet and try not to fall over. That might be another video for another time talking about that. It's fine. I'll, I'll put it as a C, just because I'm indifferent for it. It's fine. As world class track meet, but stadium events, same thing. There is Street Cop, which requires the power pad. Again, the power pad was kind of made by Bandai, so they wanted to really push this thing. So they made a game specific for the power pad in Street Cop. I will do a power pad video later on. I remember playing it back in the day. I remember it not being great. <laughs> I wanted more from it. It was just awkward to control, hard to control. I'm gonna put this game as a D. Got the Toxic Crusaders. Uh, this game is a beat em up. This game is a total rip off of like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like Turtles 2, the arcade game. And hey, you know what? It's actually done pretty well. It's only a one player though, which is too bad. This game's only a one player beat em up, but several levels, some cool bosses. I'm not a Toxic Avenger fanatic. I have a few friends who are huge trauma fans. And so a little bit of that rubbed off onto me playing this game. I think it's fun. I think it's great, actually. If you're into beat em ups, if you like Turtle 2, the arcade game, uh, you should definitely check out Toxic Avengers. I'm putting this game as an A. It's good. Another old school arcade game like Galaga. We got Xevious and Xevious from what's now known as Namco Bandai. It was a Namco game. Namco Bandai, this this may have been the game that linked them all together, man. You never know, because got Bandai releasing a Namco game for the NES. And Xevious has always been a fun shooter for me. I love the game. I love the uh, little music at the beginning of it. And the Nintendo game plays like the arcade game. So just like Galaga, if you like that old school arcade style, got it on the NES. Another game as well, I'll put this game as a C. <laughs> The ever so interesting lot of hey, Bandai. Got John Riggs here talking about the games from Toho for NES. They only made four games according to NES Guide, but I think they're all pretty decent, so they're definitely worth talking about in this video. Circus Caper especially is one that needs to be talked about because it flies under the radar so often. I truly think people see Circus Caper and they think it's Circus Charlie, which is totally not the case. And Circus Charlie never came out for the US NES. It came out for the Famicom. But this is Circus Caper. It's from Toho. And it's a great game. It's a great fun kind of platform. It's not really a platform, but it's that kind of action style game. Has the cute cartoony graphics, creepy story, you know, the sister gets whisked away or whatever in, in the fun house and now you're going through this circus to, um, you know, to fight off these enemies with the creepy clown faces in the background. It's cute and it's creepy and it's creepy because it's cute. I don't know. It's, it's one of those, <laughs> one of those situations. You get some items later on, you get your keys later on. There's a lot going on with this game, and again, a game that not a lot of people even checked out or even heard of. So I wanted to bring it up in this video for sure. I think it's cool. I think it's a B. We have Godzilla, and Godzilla is probably the most popular game on this list. I don't know why I was such a big fan of this game. I'm not even the biggest kaiju fan. I like it. I like Godzilla. I like the story of Godzilla. But I'm not, a, I'm not a Godzilla fanatic, if that makes sense, because I have some friends who are. And this game is so monotonous. It's the same thing, same levels, no matter where you go, no matter what platform you stand on. The idea is you have to go through and fight the other giant monsters, right? So you make your way through, 
and then you have to fight your way through in a kind of, you know, side-scrolling action part. You can punch, you can tail whip, you can use your uh, radiation breath or whatever. You're constantly being bombarded from, like, bullets and missiles and stuff like that, too. So, I mean, you're going to take damage along the way, whether you want to or not. And when you finally make your way to these giant monsters, then you got to defeat them by nature of your same attacks, your radiation breath, your punches, your kicks, your tail whip. And it's not just Godzilla. You can also play as Mothra in this. And although Mothra can just fly around, you can't really fly around too much in this game because your character sprite's too big. <laughs> it's this game so and Mothra is super annoying too because Mothra whenever he gets hit uh, you uh, kind of get shucked back to the bottom side of the screen and you're just like you can't just fly through everything and drop your whatever wing follicle stuff I don't know it's like you're molting along the way it looks like a strategy game but the strategy is get to the end and fight off the giant monsters that's basically the strategy to this game <laughs> I still think it's a lot of fun I'm still giving this game a B <laughs> Then we have Godzilla 2, a little bit more uncommon on this one. Nothing like the first game except for the strategic element, and this is the game I think Godzilla 1 should have been, because um, this is more your tactical game. You have to send your enemies out there. You're not playing as Godzilla. This is, you're finally versus Godzilla. Most Godzilla games you don't actually play as Godzilla. <laughs> That's why the first one kind of threw me off a little bit. This one you play as the military, and you have to send your tanks, your planes, your whatever, to fight off Godzilla and Godzilla, and then you have your little battle back and forth. Like, you shoot your thing, they hit you, whatever the case is, um, trying to defeat Godzilla in this tactical game. And believe it or not, I think this game's totally decent, too. It's a game I can get into, it's a game that I think's kind of fun. I'm also giving this game a B. <laughs> Times of Lore is the name of this game, and it looks like an RPG, and it plays like an RPG with a couple of different twists to it. Medieval style, could never go wrong with medieval RPGs, you know what I mean? You talk to people, you get sent on your quest, you have your options to, you know, look and search and take and whatever. But instead of it being a turn-based RPG, and instead of it being like an adventure style RPG, like a Legend of Zelda where you can slash your sword, it's a little bit more like ease in a way, where you just have to crash into your enemy and that's how you attack them. You crash into them, hopefully they're the ones taking damage and not you, right? <laughs> as always. And sometimes when you defeat them, they'll drop something and you can pick it up and that'll help you out on your quest. It's called Times of Lore. It's... Eh, it's not terrible. I mean, it's not great, but it's not terrible. I do like the music to this game. This has an underrated soundtrack, I think. I'll give it a C. Not a lot of games from Toho, but hey, they're all worth Escape published 20 Nintendo games according to NESguide.com and going to review and rank them along the way in this regular series I've been doing for quite a while now featuring a lot of other video game companies. But today it's all about Mindscape and the crazy games that they've had. There's some popular ones on this list, a few of them you've never heard of. Maybe some of them just kind of fly, fall out of the radar for most people because they came out later on in the NES life cycle. Going to be some interesting games along this list. I'm looking forward to this video. Including 720. Oh, man, what a cool arcade game this was. This was like during the, the, the height of skating when like skating was like, and I say skating, I mean skateboarding. I mean, with all the things like the uh, the Bones Brigade and the Vision Streetwear and all that, and, I mean, the skating was huge. And the arcade game was great because the joystick looked broken, but it gave you that chance to swirl it around so you can go off these ramps and try to go for a 720. I don't think I've ever landed one ever on this game, <laughs> but I certainly want to do it. Kind of a fun game too. You're in this little world, this little city where these ramps are everywhere and everything like that, but you go through the different paths. So you can go to one path and I'll give you like the downhill slalom. So you're like going down this hill, trying to go through the, uh, go through the poles and all that. Oh, there's like a, the, like a height one, like you're on a half pipe and you know, trying to do what you can there. Totally fun game, um, especially for the arcade. The NES though, oh, a little bit more harder to control, especially with the D-pad. NES Advantage, a little bit easier, but the D-pad, oh, it was pretty rough, man. I just wanted to skate around and have fun, but you're under the timeline, you're under the crunch of the clock, and you're under the crunch of the bees. And the bees, oh my goodness, how annoying these bees were. It would say, skate or die. Um, before Skate or Die said Skate or Die. The game would say Skate or Die, and then if the bees get you, then, um, and then uh, the, the bees would shapeshift too, <laughs> like to look like a hammer, like they're gonna hit you and all that. And if they hit you, well, then, um, you know, that's you, you lose a life for doing that. But 720, I think it's actually technically called 720 Degrees. Everyone just calls it 720. Great game. The NES, uh, much to be desired. Um, I'm gonna give, as much as I love the arcade game, I'm giving this game a C on the NES, just because it's a lot harder to control, and it, it, should, it didn't have to be, but it was. Alfred Chicken, 
Another game that just looks European, feels European, kind of a decent game, kind of a decent game. Uh, you play as, I'm, I'm assuming, Alfred Chicken, right? <laughs> and you're collecting these items, and you can dive bomb, and dive bomb these enemies, and that's how you attack them, that's how you, uh, that's how you get rid of these enemies that are in your way. Um, these platforms make you jump higher. I thought it was pretty creative, the different ways you die. Like, when you die, you don't just blow up and disappear, but, like, you know, the feathers kind of fall to the ground and stuff like that. Uh, this game, this game I didn't get until later in my NES collecting, and... I mean, I don't have any qualms with this game. It's okay. I'll give this game a C. Battleship, based on the board game, I guess you'd call it a board game, um, was one of my favorites uh, when I was growing up. I was, I was a big fan of Battleship. It was just fun for me. Now, if you're not familiar with Battleship, or you've heard of it, but you're not really sure what's going on, you place your pieces on the board just like they place their pieces on the board. These pieces are ships. And then you fire, and then they fire, and you have to let them know if they hit you or if it missed, right? And then if they hit you, then you have to figure out, okay, well, I don't know what ship it is, but it's either going to be, you know, going up or down or left or right. Uh, they never go diagonal. Um, and you just have to, like, keep hitting them until you sink the battleships, and when you've done that, you've won the game. What I like about the Nintendo version, this NES version, is it's not just firing back and forth. You can also fire, like, other missiles, so it does, like, five at a time, and, you know, takes care of more area or more of the battleship, uh, as it were, um, per round. And, and you have a limited supply of those. You have an unlimited supply of just, you know, like one-on-one. -on -one. But you can do these other special missiles to clear out some extra space. Fun game. I still don't mind going back to this NES version and playing it every once in a while. Just because I think it's pretty cool. I'm going to give this game a B. Captain Planet and the Planeteers was a popular t uh, cartoon. That was all about saving the environment. You have the five forces that come together. I'm not going to repeat them in this video, but you know what they are. And I feel like I have to. It was Earth, Wind, Fire, Water, Heart. And Heart was the fifth one, for sure. By those powers combined, it summons Captain Planet, who helps save the day. I don't know why Captain Planet just doesn't take care of business in the first place, but maybe it's up to the kids. And maybe that's the underlying... I never thought about that. Maybe that's the underlying message is it's the youth of today. It's the children of today who can make a difference on tomorrow's planet. But then every once in a while, they need that extra help. When you put all their powers together, they're unstoppable. I think maybe Captain Planet's a figment of their imagination or something. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking too deeply into this. I'm talking about the video game, which sucks. The Nintendo game, it starts out like, like a shooter. Like it should be a shooter. It should be a great shooter. Super difficult. One hit kill. You're done. And then there's other parts of the game where you actually play as Captain Planet. Now, if the whole game was this part where you play as Captain Planet, it wouldn't be as bad, I don't think. You can use your powers while you're flying around as Captain Planet. You can use the power of water or fire. Um, you can use the powers of Earth. You know, whatever, whatever you need for the situations to get you through these kind of like corridor maze type, um, you know, levels where you're flying around and doing all that. It should be a great game, and it's totally not. And I think I want to, just because, oh, I want to give this game an F. I'm going to give this game an F. When you're flying around as Captain Planet, it's not as bad, but it's still pretty bad. Combined with the terrible shooter element to it, this game's an F. Championship Pool, another billiard game for your NES. And it plays like a decent pool game. I mean, it's it's pool. You're shooting pool. You're you're shooting stick. You're playing billiards. A um, couple of different modes in this game. It's pool. It's AC. I don't need to tell you much more than that. It's it's a, it's okay. Yeah. Quarter of the way there. Five down. Fifteen to go. With Conan the Barbarian. Now, <laughs> this game. This has to, has to be based off of a PC game at the time, or a computer game at the time. It just feels like that. And this game is also pretty, pretty terrible. Jumping mechanic is terrible. The fighting mechanic is terrible. It's so hard to get through even the first area. It's hard to get past this little first thing that you're trying to get through, and you can't, because it's not letting you. To the point, I've never gotten past this little first part of this game, because I just lost interest. I was like, well, okay. I guess I guess I'll move on to a game that makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Conan the Barbarian. Um, is it better past that part? I wouldn't think so. I'm giving this game an F. We have Days of Thunder, and if you're familiar with this channel, this is not the uh, the found version of Days of Thunder. This is the commercial version of Days of Days of Thunder. This is the commercial one. You buy it at the store, you rented it, uh, you pick it up at conventions. This is uh, typical Days of Thunder. It's not a terrible racing game, but it kind of is. 
<laughs> it's Days of Thunder. You um, you have to qualify for your track, and then once you're qualified, then you can race along with everyone else, and that part looks kind of cool for a racing game. A little, uh, you know, makes me a little bit dizzy playing this game, <laughs> playing Days of Thunder. There is a pit stop mode where when you go into the pit, finally, and that's when you can, like, you can replace your tires, fill up your tank of gas. That's this part's actually kind of difficult because you're trying to maneuver all of these characters around your car to get them to do certain things like that. Um, it's interesting enough, but still not as interesting as far as like, you know, like racing games are hit or miss with me. And this game, I'm going to call it a miss. I'm going to give this game a D. Dirty Harry allows you to play as 8-bit Clint Eastwood in uh, in this game here. Maybe a little bit like a RoboCop, where you're just uh, you're fighting the enemies. You can punch them, but you can also whip out your gun and shoot them. I mean, you're Dirty Harry after all. The levels are interesting too because sometimes it's just like a side-scrolling part, but then you're like, oh, I'll just I'll go down the alley, and there'll be something on the other side of the alley, or you can jump in the sewers and you can uh, fight enemies there too. Interesting gameplay going on with this one. They decided to make a Dirty Harry game. Mindscape made a lot of movie licensed games, and Dirty Harry happens to be one of them. And I'll give this game a C. Flight of the Intruder, again, has to be based on a computer game. It just has to be, right? It gives you that. I compare all games that look like this to Top Gun for the NES. And it's a lot like Top Gun, only this one, um, you're unlocked, so you can actually do flips and loops and turn around. And, um, you know, you're just fighting off the enemies in a first-person uh, flight game for the NES. And I think it looks pretty cool. It's just more of the same with Flight of the Intruder. I'll put this game as a D. Gauntlet 2. Now we're talking. Quite literally talking. This game actually speaks to you. It actually says, you know, welcome Red Warrior. Welcome Red Warrior. It'll actually say things like, you know, like like Blue Valkyrie is it. You know, Yellow Wizard shot the food. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Gauntlet 2 utilizes the four-player controller, the, the, the satellite or whatever. So you can actually play four players simultaneous in this game, which is what Gauntlet's all about, man. It was like one of the perfect couch co-op games. Or, you know, shoulder co-op if you're playing at the arcades. Tons of levels. Some fun, kind of creative maze levels. A lot of the levels are kind of basically the same. You just have to work your way to the exit. And then sometimes there's extra exits that will maybe warp you to a few levels uh, past. You know, like, you know, warp five levels into the future or something like that. You can uh, fight off the enemies. You can also attack them by just running into them and hitting them. And you have to defeat the enemy bases so they stop coming out. I always thought it was a little... I felt a little uneasy anytime the ghost would enter you to uh, take damage. Like, you know, like, the ghost would go into you. You just absorb the ghost. And then there's, like, if there's a swarm of ghosts and you're right in the middle of it and they all just absorb you from all angles. I was like, oh, that can't... that can't be fun. Right? Gauntlet 2, a lot of fun, a lot of gameplay on this one. I'm going to give this one, believe it or not, gonna give it an S. Fun game, graphics were great alongside the arcade game. You can play it as a one player, but definitely better with multiple players. And I love the music too, I love that music. I should give this game an A just based on the sound it makes when you step on those stun tiles on the floor, but I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm not going back on my word, I'm gonna give this game an S. Interesting list so far, halfway through the games, and we still have 10 more games to go, right on. Infiltrator, I like half of it, and I don't like the other half. I'll tell you the half I don't like first, and that's when you first start playing it. Because <laughs> you're in this uh, helicopter, I believe, and you have to like fly the helicopter by leaving the ground, and there's all these buttons on the side. It's one of those things, if you're just going to pick up this game for the first time, you're going to pop it in as an emulator, you find it at a convention, no manual, no instructions or anything. Um, you're just like, you keep crashing because it's like you have to, you don't know which one of the buttons do. So that's really rough right from the start. However, you can play the next part, which I do like. And this is before there was like Metal Gear Solid. Then we had Metal Gear, but we didn't have Metal Gear Solid. This was the fun part. This was the sneak around the base, infiltrate the camps, go in there. You can like, you know, put on like, um, like the enemy's clothes and they don't question you and, except for like if they're like a higher commanding officer or something like that. They ask for your papers. If you don't have the right papers, that's game over. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's some fun going on with this part too. Um, so I like that part. Don't really care for the helicopter part, uh, but I'll put this game as a C. It only makes sense that they had a Last Starfighter video game. Now, The Last Starfighter is based on a movie that's about a video game. I mean, the whole idea with Last Starfighter is, you know, uh, a kid was playing this game, he got the high score, and then, like, they, but the aliens or whatever used this video game to recruit uh, for their star fleet. It, it's been also, what, 35 years since I've seen this movie? I'm pretty sure that's the plot, though. 
<laughs> I actually, I have a, I have a picture book in the other room from, from way back in the day. But the Nintendo game is based on just the flying around space and shooting enemies, and not very well. It's a horizontal shooter, and you can switch angles. You can switch the angles. You can switch directions. So you can like fly this way, then you fly the other way. Super difficult. One hit kills. There's stuff in the way that if you run into it, you'll explode. You'll die. And then the ships themselves, you can go super fast. You can go super slow. It's still not going to do you any good. Super difficult uh, level rating on this one. Last Starfighter. Man, I wish it was a better game, but I'll put the I'll put it as a D. I have a love-hate relationship with loops. 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 There's a Z at the end of it. That's how that's how edgy this game is. Puzzle game, you have to place the pieces on the grid, and if it makes a complete loop, it makes those pieces disappear. Cool. I keep getting the rotate button and the drop button mixed up every time. And you figure if I play it long enough, I would get used to it. And I never do. I really don't. I wish I did, but it's just I, I don't. I end up putting the piece in the wrong place or at the wrong angle because you can you can flip the pieces around. Some of them are longer than other ones. Some of them are more obscure than other ones. And it's like, oh, I want to put it here. I'm going to rotate it. And instead of rotating it, I drop it. And then it's too late. I was like, oh, seriously? <laughs> I like this game. I just don't like the controls for it. Uh, but I still like this game. I'm going to put this game as a B. I've told this story on my channel before, but Mad Max I have a fond relationship with because when I was in middle school, our teachers in our school district went on strike. So instead of going to school for the first day of school, I was like, well, I'm staying home anyway. I may as well rent a video game. So I went down to my local grocery store because we could rent games there too. And they just got in Mad Max. So I, I rented Mad Max. So I'll always have that fond memory of not going to school for the first day of school. <laughs> and blinks of Mad Max. The strike worked, the teachers got what they wanted, school is back in session two days later, so having an overnight rental worked out perfectly. And the game itself, it's okay, I kinda like it. You drive around and you can use your uh, your your dynamite to uh, you know blow up these bases, blow up the other cars. There's a part later on too when you're actually in the area where you can like knock cars off their, um, you know, knock them into the nether, you know, defeat the other cars. Thunderdome, right? I don't know, I still haven't seen the movie. I'll put this game as a C. I think it's, I, it's fun, it's okay. It's fun to check out. Mule is an interesting one. Mule has to have come, again, this is another one of those games that had to come from a computer game. Now, console gamers like myself, they play Mule, a little confusing, don't really know what's going on. But I have some friends who are Mule fanatics. I mean, there is an element to it. There is a, uh, a, a tactical procedure to playing this game. It's um, there. I mean, it's the first, I mean, there's a huge mule community that you know is out there. Now, this list is based on my own opinion, <laughs> right? So, never mind their opinion. My opinion is it's weird. You start by choosing your character. Decent speech in this game as well. You start by choosing your character. You then uh, go by like a mule or supplies and you put them at base and you have to capture the wampus or something like that. There is some interesting things going on with mule uh, that I have never got into. Now this game is also four player. So maybe it's better as a four player, especially when the other players are kind of training you or teaching you. Maybe that's what I need with this game. In the meantime, I'm giving this game a D. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you're subscribed and consider joining the Patreon. It really helps out the channel. Paperboy was a very interesting game for its time. I loved the arcade game because I actually had the bicycle handlebars as your controller, which I thought was pretty cool. The game itself is a little bit more difficult than it should be. Um, you're, you play the role of a paper boy. You're going down the street and you're delivering newspapers. You're delivering the papers to a, people who have subscribed. And then if they haven't subscribed, go ahead and trash their house. You can toss papers through their front window, knock stuff off their uh, banister or something like that. There's like other enemies in the way too. There's like a mom. There's like somebody skateboarding or somebody uh, breakdancing. There's uh, like the Grim Reaper shows up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's go-karts and stuff like that. This game is definitely an interesting, uh, an interesting one for sure. The cool thing is, if you deliver all the right newspapers to all the right houses, then you'll get more subscribers. So then you can actually, you know, get more points by s delivering more newspapers. You don't get them all. You're gonna get people who unsubscribe, especially if you're delivering the newspaper and you end up tossing the newspaper through their window. They're not gonna like that. And then for some reason, at the end of every level, at the end of the block. There's like this BMX course or something <laughs> that just shows up out of nowhere. It's like, okay, sure. Paperboy's kind of fun. Um, I want to put this game as a B. It's really difficult and I kind of suck at it, but I still like coming back to it. I think it's fun. It has a funky, funky uh, theme song to it too when you're playing. It's really cool. 
Paperboy 2 was more of the same. Um, this one lets you play as the boy or girl. There's Girls can deliver newspapers too, don't get it twisted. And it has the idea where you can toss papers on one side or toss papers on the other side. You actually like turn the corner and go down a block and then you know newspapers are on one block or you know this side or that side. So that was kind of cool. It switched up the gameplay just a little bit, just enough. So it's like, oh, it's still a familiar game, but it has a little bit extra added addedness to it. <laughs> with Paperboy 2. And Paperboy 2, um, I mean, I view it kind of like Paperboy 1. It's okay. It's just, it's all right. I'll put this game as a B as well. Road Blasters, super fun. Uh, this game could have been a Tengen game, but I'm glad Mindscape picked it up for this uh, official release. You start by choosing your route. It's a racing game, but it's more of a shooting game. Uh, you do have a race against the clock. You have to pick up these green orbs. Uh, that'll be your gasoline to get you to where you need to go. But you also have your gun. You can shoot these other enemies. And then other times, um, a thing will drop from the sky that will give you, like, a machine gun power or, like, you know, a hyper turbo speed power or something like that. There's some fun things happening with Road Blasters. It just looks kind of cool. Super arcade-style shooting game. This looks like the kind of game that doesn't even exist. It looks like the kind of game that they'd be playing on a TV show like, that they just kind of made up <laughs> for the purpose of the TV show. Um, fun game, though. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Road Blasters. I'm going to give this game an A. Round Ball 2 on 2 is basketball. Why do you call it Round Ball? I mean, are you not using a basketball? Can, can, any, can any ball work as long as it's round? Well, it's 2 on 2 basketball, and it plays actually kind of decently for a basketball game, but it's still, it's missing all the great elements of some of the other great basketball games that make you want to play it. I don't know if it's just because it's a two-on-two -two thing. I mean, really, the only reason why it's two-on-two -two is because it lets you play with four players. It's a four-player simultaneous game, so gotta give props for that. However, it's still just kind of like a mediocre-ish basketball game. The, uh, the, the shot projecting, like where you shoot the baskets and all that, a little difficult to get used to. I've tried getting into this a few times. Um, I, I haven't got into it as much as some of the other basketball games. I'll put this game as a D. Take it back. The Terminator, well, the good news is it's better than Terminator 2. The bad news is it's still a bad game. <laughs> it just looks like it. They could have had a lot of fun with this game. They really could have. They could have had a lot of fun with this game, but the platforming is off, the shooting is off, your characters, uh, like the graphics um, aren't great, especially for its time. Like when this game came out, you'd think that the graphics, would, I mean, because other games were showcasing like, you know, really great, uh, really great graphics for video games for the time. And this one... Not so much, I, I gotta be honest with you. It's still, I mean, it, it's not like it's the worst game ever. It's just at the time for when this game came out, it should have been a lot better, a little bit more polished than it was. But it is better than Terminator 2. I wanna give this, I'll give this game a D at least. It's not quite an F, uh, but I'll give it a D. Mindscape with their interesting title. We got John Riggs here looking at the games from American Sammy for the Nintendo Entertainment System. They only had 10 games according to NESGuide.com. We're going to rank and review them along the way. That video starts right now. Amagon is one of the most conflicting games I've heard other people talk about for the NES. Some people say it's too easy. Some people say it's too hard. Some people say it's too weird. Some people compare it to a lot of other games. It's all right. It's not so much of a gripe, but one of the things with this game and me is if you hold the A button down, you will constantly jump. Like, as soon as you land, you'll jump again. So you can just hold the A and you're just constantly jumping. Um, not that it's a huge deal, because you can just let go of the jump button, of course. But, I don't know, it just, for some reason, that's kind of weird for me. I just need to hit that button once for jump, and I want to be able to control that. So you're in the jungle, and you're going through, and you're shooting the other enemies, and you have a finite amount of bullets. However, you find bullets all the time, so it's no big deal. The jumping, you, you jump quick in this game. That's the other thing, going back to the jumping, um, like you, like when you lift off the ground to when you land on the ground, it just, it's like a snap, I don't know, like when you play this game, feel how it jumps. And like you don't really float or anything like that, you just gotta, you just, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain. It's its own thing, which is, hey, that's, that's something unique. Anyway, you make your way through, you're shooting the other enemies, and then every once in a while this kind of weird thing happens where you get really big, and now you're playing as the super muscle guy. Which is good news for you, because without this, it's a one-hit kill. This game's one of those one-hit kill games when you're just regular scrawny yourself. When you get this guy and you're throwing uppercuts instead of shooting, which is kind of fun, actually. Then you actually have a couple of hits before you turn back into your old self. And then, of course, once you're there, then it's back to one-hit kill. I'll at least give this game a B. It's worth checking out.
Arkista's Ring is one of those interesting ones too. Maybe you saw this on the rental shelf once upon a time. It's one of those games, I don't know anyone who ever bought it new, but it would show up every once in a while as, you know, maybe the game that was gifted to someone or just kind of appears out of nowhere. But you know, again, I saw it on the rental shelf, but I never knew anyone who had this game growing up. And it's actually not so bad of a game. I mean, you go around, it reminds me a little bit like Game Ground for the Sega Genesis, where it has a top view and, uh, and Game Ground's a terrible example because it's not at all like Game Ground. It just it reminds me of that for some reason. Maybe a little bit more like Gauntlet. Who knows? But you're in that top view, gotta shoot the other enemies, and then a key might appear. You get the key and you go through the door, you go on the next stage. And that's kind of this game in a nutshell. It's all right, I'll, I'll give this game a C. Michael Andretti's World GP. This game, it's a racing game, has that little, you know, it's 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 World GP. What gets me with this game, and not even so much of the racing element of it all, that's, that's okay, I can take that, I guess. It's to turn the corners when you're controlling your vehicle. Not only do you have to just hold the button and then your up button uh, switches gear. Again, I don't mind that at all either. That's fine by me. If, if you, know, you, know, you have to drive a manual and you have to push up to change your gears to go a certain speed and you have to do that because you have to like drop it down gears to turn corners easier and stuff like that. What gets me the most about this game is you can't just hold left or hold right to turn left or to turn right. You have to keep tapping the button like, you know, like right, 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 left, 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 left. And that's your, that's your controlling. That's how you turn the car. It's like you turn it by notch by notch on the tire. You can't just hold it to turn it all the way. You have to do it notch by notch. And that reason alone gives this game an F. Because of that, I can barely play this game and I won't even bother. American Sammy had a Might and Magic game for the NES, and this one actually controls pretty well too. If you're not familiar with the Might and Magic series, this one's okay. It's a kind of a dungeon crawler, kind of a dungeon crawler. It's a dungeon crawler. Let's call it what it is. And it has the RPG element of, I like how the walls actually scroll when you're walking, so it's not just like frame by frame by frame. A little bit of something special for the visuals all the same. You run into enemies every once in a while, you can fight them, you can click auto, which will, you know, kind of help you make decisions better, I guess, depending on what the situation is. You can bribe the enemies. How wonderful of an idea this is. It's like, hey, instead of fighting, I'm not gonna run away, I'm not gonna fight you, but do you accept these jewels, this gold, these items or whatever, in lieu of fighting? What a wonderful idea. That's totally what I would do in real life. <laughs> it's a neat game, and I want to give this game a B. I think it's, I th I think it's pretty fun. I think it's fun to check out. And speaking of might and magic, might you hit that subscribe button, please? I ask that because more than half of the people who watch my channel aren't even subscribed yet. It's a huge favor for me, and it shows that you like watching videos like this. So if you do this style of video and the other videos I do on my channel, Hit subscribe, there's always something new coming up. You got your Ninja Crusaders for the NES, and this is one of those games that not a lot of people talk about. Kind of flies under the radar a lot of times. You got your Ninja Gaiden 1, 2, and 3, and this game got to be heavily inspired by Ninja Gaiden, and why not? What, what a wonderful game those uh, that series is. So let's make Ninja Crusaders. Two players simultaneous on this game. That already gets bonus points already. What doesn't is one-hit kill. Man, one-hit kills are so rough, dude. Uh, but this game features a lot of items, too. So you start out with your shuriken, but you can also pick up whips and chains and bow staff and stuff like that, too. A lot of fun happening with this game. Again, that one-hit kill, that's pretty rough. The enemies in this game, they're robots. So it's almost like, is this game made in Europe? Or why, why, are, why are they robots? But hey, you know what? Fun game, difficult game because of that one hit kill. But still, I think it's worth checking out. And two players simultaneous, that might help you out too. I'm gonna give this game an, uh, I'll give this, I'll give, I'll give this game a B. Silkworm, what a fun arcade shooter now available on your NES. Now available, it's been available for like 30 years now. So in the game Silkworm, it's two player simultaneous. You can play as Silk or Worm, right? Well, no. You can, <laughs> but it does have a cool feature where the two players, you can play as the helicopter or play as the Jeep. If you're playing this game on a one player, you get to choose which one you want to be. But if you're two players simultaneous, you can have one in the sky, one on the ground. The helicopter shoots and also shoots at an angle, so that's going to help you out too to uh, defeat, you know, ground enemies and stuff like that. Very, very cool. Smooth shooter on this one. And the Jeep has a gun torrent that can go forward, backward. It has a little arcing thing so you can kind of aim where you want to shoot in the sky. Also have features of jumps. So you can like jump over enemies that are on the ground if you need to. Fun game, this one. And um, it plays very similarly to the arcade. A, a great shooter. I'm putting this game as an A. Thundercade, another shooter, but not 
as great. This one features that choppy animation, which is too bad too, because the shooter itself is actually okay. It's odd that you play as a motorcycle when you're shooting other tanks and stuff like that. Probably not the smartest idea for this guy to infiltrate enemy bases on a motorcycle. And then you can pick up your uh, items being like your sidecar. But your sidecar can also shoot to the side, which will help you out. Or you can, you know, shoot like, you know, stronger bullets to really uh, help you take out some of these tanks that are in the way. Because again, a motorcycle versus a tank, not the smartest idea in the world. But Thundercade, if you get past the choppy animation part of it, which to me is the biggest hang up, it's a decent shooter. It's actually pretty good and it's worth checking out. And I'll put this game as a C. Twin Cobra, another fantastic shooter. We had three shooters in a row now, right? Twin Cobra is another fantastic shooter from American Sammy for the NES. You play as a helicopter and you shoot the enemies and it's I like the fact that you get um, item upgrades, weapon upgrades so often in this game. Sometimes you're just struggling to get like the twin shot. You're just struggling to get something that you can shoot more than one direction or something anyway. And this game gives it to you often enough that it makes it so you're good. Twin Cobra is interesting because it was made by Taito, wasn't it? But then American Sammy released it. Well, I'm not going to get into the details about it, but it, American Sammy was the one who published the game for the NES. So I'll, I'll call it an American Sammy game. Uh, at least as far as the publisher goes, Twin Cobra, an excellent shooter. I'm also giving this game an A. Ultimate Basketball may be my favorite basketball game on the NES. Believe it or not, it's a basketball game I actually kind of like on the Nintendo Entertainment System. I know we have Double Dribble, I know we have Arch Rivals, but this game actually plays really well. Like, as far as basketball games go, it plays really well. And when I say that, I mean, it's just, it's easy to go up and down the court, it's easy to steal the ball from the enemies if you have to. I mean, it's not easy, easy, but you know, it's, you know, you have a better uh, odds, I suppose. Features that kind of slam dunk cinematic, shooting the ball, passing the ball. It's all, it's all good with me, man. This game actually, I think this plays very well for an NES basketball game. I'll put this game as a C at least. Vice Project Doom could have been a lot of games individually, but they put them all together. So it starts off with this very cool kind of like Spy Hunter. If, I, if this was Spy Hunter 2, I would have been sold. I would have been all about it. If this mode here, this driving around, shooting, uh, you know, shooting the other enemies, you know, going through these barricades and all that, if this was the entire game, it would have scored very well with me because I think this part's really, really fun. And then the fact that the next level after you do this driving part is an action platformer, is one of these action games. Man, this is like icing on the cake. There's so much going on with this game. I'm all about it. Again, this game could have been split in half. It could have been like, you know, here's one game, here's the other game, and you know, the alternating levels or whatever it is are on their own cartridge. I would have bought the game twice because, you know, the driving element with the shooting and all that's great that Spy Hunter style, and then the action part of it kind of, you know, uh, reminds me a little bit like a uh, like a Shatterhand or something like that. That part's really, really excellent. Both games, excellent. You put them together, it's on one game. It's Vice Project Doom. And it has like the storylines and the cinematics. This game's super, super cool. Um, I want to get the, I want to give this game an A. Mm -hmm. 10 games from American Sammy published for the Nintendo Entertainment The publisher, not very well known for their games. They're not up there with the likes of a Capcom or Konami, but they're also no chumps either when it comes to making some great games on the Nintendo Entertainment System. How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here checking out some great games from Romstar for the Nintendo Entertainment System. They only had eight games published according to NESGuide.com. We're going to cover all eight games in this video. We're ranking them along the way. That video starts right now. Baseball Stars 2 is the follow-up, of course, to Baseball Stars, which we featured in the SNK video. Baseball Stars, for my money, the best NES baseball game of all time. And Baseball Stars 2, very, very good. It's lacking something. It's missing something SNK-tastic. It's really, 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 really good. Just not Baseball Stars good, but still very good. It plays exactly like how I love my baseball NES games to play, or just baseball games in general. The angles of everything, where they are, where people are, what buttons do what, it's perfect. And this game plays very, very well. I'm putting this game as a B. It's not as great as Baseball Stars. I know I've said in previous videos that I rank these games amongst themselves, but I'm still giving this game a B. It's, it's very, very good. Champion Bowling. This is a game that you may have seen once or twice looking through uh, old collections, uh, at game conventions. This one pops up pretty regularly. 
it's a decent bowling game for the NES. It's There's really nothing bad about it. I mean, outside of the fact that you could be really bowling, I suppose. I don't know. But as far as bowling video games go, hey, you know what? It actually plays okay. I'm giving this game a C. It's fine. It's a, it's, it's a fine bowling game. It really is. It's a C. You talk about these hidden gems, you talk about Cowboy Kid, one of the greatest NES games of all time. And if you're thinking to yourself, Cowboy Kid, I've never even heard of this game. Well, it's exactly, this is why I love doing these videos. So Cowboy Kid, excellent two-player game. Uh, you play as the new sheriff in town and you're trying to, you know, defeat the bad guys. But it has that view. It plays a lot like um, like the Goemon games, or if you're not familiar with Goemon for the Famicom, did you ever play Legend of the Mystical Ninja for the Super Nintendo? Before it got to the 2D side-scrolling part, it looked like this, and the whole game plays like this. It's excellent. You can go in shops and get weapons, you can, uh, you know, play some games, get items, talk to the townsfolk, defeat the bad guys, and it's an excellent, again, two-player couch co-op game. It's called Cowboy Kid. It's so excellent. You look for it now, you're looking for a physical copy of this game. It goes up there in price now for an NES game, but you have other means to play it. I know you do. Cowboy Kid, super, super good. I'm giving this game an A. We talked about bowling earlier, now we have darts in the form of magic darts. I liked the fact that you could play as either, you know, boy or girl, and then there's like a robot and a monkey and <laughs> you know, some other crazy things in here too. And you know what? It's actually kind of a fun game. It really is. Now darts here in America, at least, here in the United States of America, dart, darts is darts. Darts is the thing that you see at the pub, you see at the bar, um, you know, you might see an electronic version of it or just, you know, in, in the basement somewhere, some darts. But man, you watch some of these tournaments in the UK, they take their darts very seriously. It is insane. And they're very, very good too. Actually, it was watching some of those UK tournaments with darts to make me go, oh, you don't actually want to get the bullseye every time. You're looking for like other things. Like you're looking for um, like the triple 20s or something like that. I mean, there's little things in there. Um, a lot of nuance with darts. I mean, there's it's more than just throwing it and hope it, hope it actually lands on the dartboard first off. <laughs> if you're like me anyway. <laughs> Where after a while you start throwing it like underhand stuff like that to see if it sticks. Magic darts, I'm gonna put this game as a C. It's still it's still darts, but it's it's still kind of fun to play. It's 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 worth checking out, I think. Especially if you play as like the monkey or the robot. Uh, it's 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 pretty cool. It's fun. Now lawn darts, that's the game we need. Hmm. Have to look have to look into that. Rally bike, it's a a, a bike game. It's it's like it's another one of these like uh, overhead racing games. It's another one of these kind of like like bump and jump without the bump or the jump kind of games. It's all right. It's okay. It's I mean it's 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 a it's a rally bike game. I just wish there was something else going on with it. Even if it was a straight up rip off of Bump and Jump, but you play as a motorcycle, I'd be cool with that. That's something. This game, man, you're on a bike. And when I say bike, I mean motorcycle, right? This game, I'll give a C. It's yeah. I mean it's not terrible. It's just it's you know it's okay. It's C. Thunder and Lightning's great because at least it spoils what the game is in the box art. That was the thunder right there, apparently. Let's call it what it is. It's an Arkanoid clone. It's a breakout clone to the point where you actually get your same kind of upgrades. The multi-ball, the extended bar, you know, for Ricochet and all that. It's still a fun game. I, I still like this game. It's so weird that it's just... They'd come out with this and just kind of like slide it in as a like, oh, here's a, you know, thunder thunder and lightning. And it's it's a it's a breakout clone. And I do love me some breakouts, so don't get me wrong. But when you have games like Arkanoid, this this is kind of came in and it's like, all right, well, I mean, thank you, but I'd rather just, I'd rather just play Arkanoid, you know? <laughs> Decent game. Arkanoid's great. This game, your controller moves a little bit slower too, but it's still pretty fun. I'll, you know what? Along with the other games, I'll put this game as a B. It's still kind of fun. It's just, it's not Arkanoid, but it's still, it's still great. It's still fun. I still like playing it. You know, speaking of clones, if I was like an angry video game nerd clone or a Metal Jesus clone, maybe I'd have more subscribers by now. But as it turns out, more than half of the people who watch these videos aren't even subscribed yet. Do me a huge favor, hit the subscribe button, especially if you like videos like this. I always have a new one coming up and I've done so many of them in the past. After this video, you can binge watch the entire playlist. I wouldn't mind. Twin Eagle, great arcade shooter, plays a helicopter. I kind of like the games every once in a while where he plays a helicopter. You're always playing as an airplane, whether it be like a, you know, like a, like a prop job or some kind of like, you know, like F-14, Tomcat, whatever, whatever those airplanes are called. I don't know, I don't fly a plane. It's kind of cool that you get to play as a helicopter every once in a while. This game, great, like I said, arcade shooter, two players simultaneous, fun game, great game. Especially when it comes to shooters, 
Uh, it has that difficulty level where some things are piling up on you and you want to get your upgrade, but you have to sacrifice it because you don't want to get shot. I go for it every time. I get shot every time. <laughs> Not all arcade ports translate very well to the NES, and this one does pretty well. I'm going to give this game a B. At least I'll give it a B. I have some friends who would give it an A, maybe even an S, but this way I'll, I'll give it a B. That's fair. World Champ. Again, another boxing game, like Ring King, not Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. I always got so excited whenever I see a boxing game, because I was like, oh my god, here's more Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, right? Not even close. In fact, it plays a lot more like Ring King. In fact, now that I think about it, it plays strikingly like Ring King <laughs> than it does anything else. And it's just, I wish there was more to it than this, this kind of boxing game. Um, it's not, it's not great. I mean, it really isn't. It's, you know, thank you for having a boxing game. Right? And I mean, I love watching live boxing. Like when HBO has boxing and stuff like that, I like watching that quite a bit. This is not that same experience. I really wish it was, it's not. But it's also, I mean, I had to think back to like back in the day, you had two buttons and button combinations with the D-pad. It was hard to make a boxing video game just based on those. I mean, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out did it because it was, it was cartoony and kind of over the top. But when you do something like this, which also has a little bit of a cartoony feel to it, still not quite the same. Uh, I'll put this game as a D. And not only did I give World Champ a D, this entire tier list is shaped like the letter. Is that Taxon spelled backwards as Naxat? How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here in a regular series where I love to showcase games published by certain companies, and today it's all about Taxon for the NES. According to NESGuide.com, nine games from Taxon, some of my favorites are on this small list as well, but we're going to cover all of them in this video, we're going to rank them along the way, and that video starts right now. Hey guys, oh my god, I love this game so much. Now this game, calling this game a ripoff of Castlevania would be too polite. This game plagiarizes Castlevania <laughs> to, a score, to, a, to an extent anyway, not, not 100%, but to an extent. How it looks, how you move, the staircases, the castles, the buildings where you're going and everything. I do like how you can choose which area you want to go to first. And what makes this game interesting to me is it's you and your falcon. Now my next door neighbor and I play this game a lot because the second controller can control the falcon, which is pretty neat. They can fly around, swoop down, hit enemies, grab items. There are some enemies in this game you can't even kill. Your Falcon has to kill them. One player mode, you can actually control it pretty easily. It's easier to do it on a second controller, but you can control it with a one player. And uh, you're going to need to sometimes, because sometimes you need to have the Falcon like fly way up to hit the switch, go through the door. The switch is too far away. They'll you know, hit the switch. Two seconds later, the door closes. You know, things like that, little puzzle elements. I really like that about this game. There's a few items you can pick up, like an ice ball or a fireball or you know, something like that too. Not a lot going on with that uh, mode anyway. But why it's called Eight Eyes, because the Eight Eyes are the eight gems in this game. And once you collect all the gems, you have to place them on this pedestal. That's when the door opens up, you win the game. In each level, there's a little clue. One of those kind of like puzzle games that says like, oh, red is next to white. And then white is, you know, three away from black and you have to like you know I, I remember writing down like all the clues and then kind of like putting them together you know very early this is like you know 30 years before professor Layton or anything like that it's one of those after the fact things so when i first heard about that i didn't know actually how the the final element was a puzzle but before you even get to that you got each world you got each little area that you have to go through you got a boss at the end of it i don't show it in this video but when you defeat the boss the password screen is you and the boss are like having tea and like your skeleton waiter brings you the drinks and everything. I, I, I thought that was pretty cool. Huge fan of Eight Eyes. It's one of my uh, recommended type games. Um, I'm giving this game an A. Burai Fighter, I'm pretty sure it's called Burai Fighter, uh, but this game, very, very cool. It reminds me a lot of like sidearms, remember sidearms? And this was like the NES version. I love the fact that like you can hold a certain direction and hold the attack button. So while you're firing, you'll stay, you know, if you're like shooting upward, you can still scroll and shoot upward or, you know, forward and you that way you can, you know, maneuver around the other bullets while still aiming forward and everything. Great game, a lot of power-ups. Uh, great graphics for the time. Really, really fun game. Um, don't need to say much more than that. I'm also giving this game an A. Oh, Fist of the North Star. Now, before I was at the height of my otakudom in the mid to late 90s, my introduction to Fist of the North Star was this Nintendo game. My friend had it. And I just thought it was weird. Cause it's like, first you do the little kick. I love that Fist of the North Star kick with the sound and everything. But then when you punch an enemy, they explode. Of course, I didn't realize what was going on until I saw the anime much later. I was like, ah, oh, that's why they exploded in the game. Okay. Oh, man. This game, this game's super rough. This is, I mean, there's like three or four Fists of the North Star games for the Famicom in Japan. I think there's three of them. And this game should have also stayed in Japan with those other ones. It's, um, it's, it's, it's really rough to play. Um, even if you're a fan, 
Uh, it's just like, like, why did you release this game? Out of all the other great games that you could have released uh, here in America, why this one? Well, I mean, they did and can't do anything about it, so uh, the, the, the legacy lives on. And then the fact that we have a Fist of the North Star game for the NES from Taxon, what are you going to do? I'll, give, I'll, I'll at least put it as a D. It's not that it's unplayable. It's just, man, you have to want to play it. And much like the character from Fifth of the North Star who touches an enemy and they explode, you can have that same power by touching that subscribe button to make my channel explode. I ask this because more than half of the people who watch my channel, including maybe even you, aren't subscribed yet. And the statistics prove that every time. So do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button. I love doing videos like this and I always got a new one coming up. G.I. Joe is the real American hero. There are two G.I. Joe games for the NES. I already covered one of them when I did my Capcom video. If you haven't checked that out yet, maybe check that one out right after this video. And even though the other one's from Capcom, King Capcom, I prefer the one from Taxon more on the NES. Now, they're not both the same game. I think the Taxon one came out first and then Capcom released the second one. Both of them are great games. Um, I just prefer this one from Taxon. I think it looks great. I love that the uh, the trees and all that have like animation to them. A lot of animated stuff on screen. You choose who you want to play as. You got Duke, you got Snake Eyes. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of rock and roll. Everyone loves Snake Eyes, and Snake Eyes is great too, but come on. I mean, it'd be nice if they had Shipwreck on here, but what are you going to do? It'd be super awesome if they had Sergeant Slaughter on here. Punch enemies, use your items, use your weapons. Uh, bosses are cool. Uh, you know, the bosses are creative and, you know, they're fun. Great game. Great, uh, great... Shooter, great action game for the NES. I'm giving this game an A. And from G.I. Joe to Low G, man. G standing for gravity. Uh, they call this game Low G, man, because you can jump really high. I mean, the dude from Fist of the North Star jumps higher. They didn't call it Fist of the North Star Low G, man. I don't know. So in Low G, man, I don't know, dude. It was just like, you can shoot the enemies and they freeze. And then from there, you can stab them and they explode. This game was kind of hyped up for a little bit there. For a few reasons. I remember seeing it in Nintendo Power and all that. Never owned it. Um, don't have any nostalgic for it. I do have some friends who really, really like this game. I think it's good. I think it's really good. It's just one of those games like with Power Blade on my Taito video. It's missing something and I don't know what. It even has the gimmick of jumping higher. It has the gimmick of having your stabby thing and you can freeze enemies and stab them and stuff like that. What's missing about this game? And maybe the answer is nothing. Maybe I'm the one who's missing from this game. I'm putting this game as a B. It's really, really good. It really is. It's just, man, what's, what? I don't know what, I don't know. You tell me. Come on, man, what's up with Magician for the NES? This game's supposed to be awesome. You're supposed to play as a magician. But when you first play this game, you're running errands. You're like mailing people's letters and you know, you're trying to do things and there's like a constant scroll of text that you're so like, you're trying to play the game, but you're always reading something too. This game, and I rank all these games from my personal experience, my opinions, what I went through when I played them, whether I've beaten them or not. And I've beaten many of these, even with the Game Genie, just to see how the story goes and all that. This game, I couldn't get into it because I'm just like, I need the action right now, man. It's called Magician, even the, 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 the label is bright pink with lightning bolts and all that. And, and I'm over here mailing letters. Now, I know that there's a lot more to this game, of course. Especially any game for the NES where I just need, like, I just need a jump button and an attack button. But when it gives me all these stats and figures, like, yeah, this much food, this much water, this thing carries more water, you have three drinks left in your flask. Um, there's some puzzle elements later on, too, like where you're walking across these blocks and things are falling or reappearing, disappearing, and stuff like that. There's more to this game. There really is, once you get past the first little initial stuffs. But man, even from there, it's still not enough to hold me glued. I, oh, I can't wait to see what happens next. Uh, so I don't, and I hit the power off, and I pop in a good game. So what happens when I play this game? I'm putting this game as a D just because, hey, it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool, and there's something to it that's pretty unique for an NES game. But man, you have to want to play this game. Mappy Land may be in one of my top five games that surprised me the most. When I first saw it, I saw the graphics. Um, I'm familiar with Mappy the arcade game because I'm older than Sand. I'm older than my birthday. I'm old enough to be Santa Claus' father. I remember playing Mappy in the arcade and I loved it. 
And when I saw this one, I was like, oh, they made map, they made, they turned it into a kid's game. Aw, oh, how cute. This game's super, super awesome. I love this game. I really do. You ever play Super Smash Brothers? You play as Pac-Man and then like the, the, the double jump is like the little, the trampoline that kind of disappears and goes away. Those trampolines came from Mappy. And on each stage, you collect all the items and move on to the next screen. And there's different levels. There's like a Western level, a jungle level. There's, um, you know, like a haunted level, you know, like at nighttime and stuff like that. A few worlds in this game, um, there's not a lot of them, but it's cool because you also get all these items along the way too to deter you from the cats and as well as like the like boss cat who's also following you or some, some boss guy, you know, the, the, the bigger guy, the guy who's not just like all the other cats. Whoever that is. But you know, like the first one where you're collecting cheese, there's a level where you're collecting baseballs, there's one where you're collecting like engagement rings. As simplistic as this game looks, as cute as this game looks, there's still a bit of a challenge to it. And it's a good enough challenge for me. Yes, kids can play it too. But then me, again, super old. So old, I remember when they only had four of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Super fun game. Can't recommend it enough. I'm giving this game an A. It's not quite an S. Um, as, as much as I hyped it up. I like to reserve that S for these super, super, super special games. Um, but this game is really, really good. And you really should check it out. I think it's great. Mystery Quest is an interesting one because I'm not exactly sure where I'm supposed to go, what I'm supposed to be doing. It looks like it could be cool. It looks like it could be like an adventure island or something like that. It looks fun, right? Now this game looks like a kid's game and I think it was supposed to be a kid's game, but it has that difficulty level too. That, not really a difficulty level, but you're just like, you just get stuck. You're just like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. Like, going somewhere, I don't know what I'm doing. You should need to want to know what you're doing because you're going somewhere, right? Because it's scrolling somewhere and you're going in places. But then it turns into one of those games where it's like, you need keys and stuff and you find the door but you don't have the key, you don't know where the key is. It's like, oh, come on. Gotta backtrack. <laughs> you know? Um, it's, uh, I'll put this game as a C. It, it could be, there could be more to it. Star Soldier will always have a special place in my heart. It was one of the first games I purchased using my own money. We had a KB Toy Store, KB Toys and Hobby, and they had Star Soldier in overstock for like 20 bucks. I was like, oh my God, I actually have 20 bucks. I can buy this game right now. And I did. And my friends did too. So we would all play it and, you know, challenge each other's high scores and stuff like that. And it plays like a great shooter. It plays like a simplistic shooter for the NES, but it's super smooth compared to some of the other shooters on the NES. And Star Soldier, they've had this game you know, through other systems and other consoles, you know, to the, for the TurboGrafx-16 uh, and beyond. Um, so Star Soldier's been around a long, long time. And uh, this one on the NES, simplistic, yes, but it plays really well and plays pretty smoothly too. And I appreciate that about a shooter, especially for shooters anyway. I still like there's other shooters out there that are, I think that are better. This game still has a lot of dear memory in my heart for, again, being that game that I bought myself uh, during a time where I had to rely on birthdays and Christmases to actually purchase games. I rented a lot of games, but you know, when it came to actually owning a game, few and far between for me growing up. I'll give this game a C. It's pretty, pretty good. Nine games from Taxon, but there's some great ones. You got John Riggs here checking out Jolico and the 22 games they published for the NES, according to NESGuide.com. It's part of a regular series where I like to rank and kind of review games from a specific publisher for a specific console. Today it's all about Jolico for the NES. 22 games to cover, we're gonna get right into it. That video starts right now. Astyanax is one that you've probably seen before. Maybe you've never pronounced it out loud. Is it Astyanax? You are Astyanax. Either way, it's a very, very solid game. It's, it's pretty fun too. I like the cinematic to it. It has a little cutscenes, little storyline in between levels. And it's weird, you play as this kind of typical guy, right? But then when you're playing the game, you're like this armored warrior with this giant axe. A little bit like Legendary Axe. Well, I think it only reminds me of Legendary Axe because you have an axe. And you don't always have an axe. Sometimes you upgrade to a sword and stuff like that later on. This game was the first game that taught me that level of patience where you can't just hack and slash all the time. You have to build up your charge meter and then you hit it. If it's all the way filled up, it'll take more damage than if you just like, you know, slash, slash, slash and the meter doesn't have time to build up. Before Secret of Mana, this is the game that I saw that from. Astyanax, Astyanax, Secret of Mana, Secret of Mana. Lots of levels in this game. It has the bosses that are fun. I like bosses that are big and creepy looking, but also predictable in their patterns. Makes me feel better about myself, I suppose. It's another one of those games where you'll probably die more by falling into holes than by getting hits from enemies because you actually get a lot of health even to start out the game with and everything too, but SDNX, SDNX. love this game. I'll give this game a B. Bases Loaded is arguably one of the most popular video game baseball series 
uh, for any console, especially during the NES era. And I like baseball games. I didn't care for these ones. The angles, the views, this kind of threw me off. What I do like about this game is that if you hold up or hold down while you're at up to bat, um, you can actually, you know, hit high, hit low. You can kind of hit outward a little bit. So that's that's really cool. I'll give it props for that. And I will give it props for trying something new with the different camera angle. But also with that different camera angle, it makes it so it's hard for me to time exactly when to swing my bat. This is the first one here, kind of the staple one. I don't really care for it. I'm giving this one a D. And then you have Bases Loaded 2, second season. It's different where it even just kind of looks different. Like it just has a different angle to it. And then the diamond itself is at another odd angle. Um, again, they're trying something new, good for them. Uh, didn't work out for me though. I'm also giving this one a D. Bases Loaded 3, this one, I liked a little bit better than the other ones. A little bit, not by much, but I liked it a little bit better than the other ones. Same idea, same story, same thing. This one, again, changes just that kind of weird angle, that weird d dimension. But I do like this one a little bit better than the other ones. I'll actually put this one as a C, but the other two are still D. Again, I try to rank these games among themselves from the publisher. So if the other two are Ds and I like this one a little bit better, well, we'll call it a C. And then you got Bases Loaded 4, which plays a lot like Bases Loaded 3. The redeeming quality for this one for me is it actually has Seattle on here. Now it's not the Mariners, and maybe it's for the better that it's not the Mariners, but you play as the red team. It's like the fictional teams, you know? But you have Seattle as a team that you can play as. It's still a weird angle and all that, but what are you gonna do? I'll, I'll give this one a D. I promise I'm not giving this a D just because Seattle's wearing red, but it's just, man, I... There you go. <laughs> I'm not gonna explain myself, it's a D! <laughs> City Connection on the outside looks not great. But when you play City Connection and you get into it, it's very, very great. In my opinion, anyway. A lot of people don't care for this game and I understand why. Now, the gameplay of City Connection is you drive a car, in the cities there for every level i think there's like eight to ten levels so maybe eight levels and you have to fill in the uh the ground there's a game i used to have for the coleco vision called minor 2049er same idea you just have to kind of paint the ground and once you do all that then you move on to the next stage in your way you have like police cars you throw oil cans at them you can bump them out of the way there's cats in the road, you can't do anything about that, you just gotta jump over them or avoid them altogether. You can jump up the levels, you can turn around and stuff like that. You know, the animation style of this game, it looks really cool sometimes, and sometimes it looks, looks kinda choppy, but I keep coming back to this game. I just absolutely love this game. There's an arcade version of this game too, that if, you, if you're only familiar with the NES version, they have an arcade version too, which is worth checking out. But even though the gameplay is simplistic, the graphics are kind of simple. I do like how the light from the windows kind of shimmer, like when you're driving. That's just something I liked about this game. The music, I mean, isn't great. It's catchy. It's catchy. You'll be singing it for, I mean, just like Bubble Bobble, you'll be singing it all the time when you're not even thinking about it. But man, all those things aside, just when it comes down to gameplay, I think it's a lot of fun and it's addicting and I keep coming back to it because I want to get farther. I want to see how far I can go. I'm actually, I'm going to give this game an A. Even if you disagree with me, again, like I said, totally cool. You might even give it an F. I love this game. I'm giving it an A. Cyberball is your robot football game. It's a little bit on the easy side, isn't it? If you played this game before, especially this NES version, it's a little bit on the easy side. Um, but that's okay, too, because that's that's actually, you know, n nothing wrong with that. Football games, man, I hate to say they're hit and miss for the uh, NES, um, but sometimes you can do really, really well, and sometimes not so much. And this game fares a little bit better than some of the other football games, even though it's like with robots and with, you know, the ticking time bomb of, of your football. <laughs> You know, or things like that. Um, this game's okay to check out every once in a while. I'll, I'll put this game as a C. <laughs> Goal for the NES, one of the cheaper games on the NES too. And it plays okay if you like soccer games. I'm not a huge fan of soccer. You're always hitting the diagonal buttons on your controller and on a D-pad. It's not the most comfortable. 
<laughs> Maybe if you, have, if, you have the, if you have the nest advantage, it might be a little bit better for you. It's soccer, and it's, you know, what are you gonna do? You play as countries in this game. So like, if you play as, you know, you don't play as the USA, you play as USA generic. You know, if you're going to England, you're not playing as like Man United or Liverpool or anyone like that. You're, you're just playing as England, generic England. Or Italy or Korea or whoever. You're just playing as the country. So it's like, you know, it's just generic soccer, plays okay for a soccer game. It's, it's a D. This one's a D anyway for me. And did you know they made goal two and a different angle this time? One went one way and now it's going the other way. This game looks better, plays better. The computer um, attacks harder, <laughs> much much more of a difficulty level on this one than the original goal. And actually plays a little bit better, I think too. I mean, it just it gives you that little bit extra freedom, I think. The same idea too, you can't play as Liverpool, unfortunately. But you can play as England, you can play as USA, you can play as Japan, whatever the case. You know, it's, it's one of those things. It's better, so if the other one was a D, I'll put this one as a C. You got hoops! This game's actually pretty cool. I kinda like this one. It's one-on-one. -on -one. I played a lot of one-on-one -on -one when I was in school. Um, I, I'm not, believe it or not, I'm six foot five. I'm not the best at basketball. I have terrible depth perception, but I like playing basketball. I like shooting hoops anyway. You know, so I, I played more one on one than I did like basketball, basketball, if that makes sense. So this game actually is pretty decent. Only a few characters you can play as, but there's also like girl characters, which was kind of cool to incorporate the, uh, you know, the, the lady population in, in video games to, in general. The shooting mechanics were. Not great, um, but still, seriously, when you're playing a basketball game, you're tr just trying for slam dunks all the time anyway. So when you get close enough to the basket, it kind of goes to a very cool cinematic where you're either slam dunking or they're both there and you're trying to swat the ball out of the way. I thought that was pretty cool too. Hoops isn't terrible. I'm gonna give this game a C. The Last Ninja was interesting to me. I remember seeing this game advertised pretty regularly for a while in Video Games and Computer Entertainment Magazine as kind of like a PC ninja game. And I, thought, I thought it looked cool. I thought it looked pretty neat. And then it finally came out to the NES and I rented it and I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Uh, just the angles were weird, the buttons were weird. It said it won game of the year, for what? You're a terrible ninja, you can punch and kick, and not even very well. I'm sure there are people who love this game, but believe it or not, especially compared to all the other sports games on this list already, The Last Ninja, me personally, I'm putting this game as an F. Oh, I'm sure you can go deep into this game on why it's better, but man, if it doesn't get you at the very beginning, it doesn't get me at all. And I'm just like, I'm not even gonna put my effort into it because I've tried several times several times have I tried and it's like even when you get somewhere it goes somewhere you're just punching and kicking it's 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 not you're not a ninja it's you know it's virtual you know walk around and beat up bad guy, uh, something anyway I don't know it's an F from the outhouse to the penthouse you have maniac mansion now this game I also saw advertised regularly in video games and computer entertainment because they covered a lot of PC games computer games along with your console games. And I was a console gamer, through and through. I didn't have a PC, not including the Atom computer, just because I had a ColecoVision adapter. Um, I didn't even play PC games until like the mid 90s, right? I remember seeing Maniac Mansion a lot in these video game magazines, and then it was one of those games where I was like, this will never come to the NES. It can't, it's, it's way too involved, it's way too deep. It'll never be on the Nintendo Entertainment System. And they brought it out for the Nintendo Entertainment System, and it's done so well. If you're not exactly familiar with Maniac Mansion, maybe you've heard it before, um, you're trying to save your kidnapped girlfriend. So you play as the main dude, and then you choose any two of this lineup. And this game has something like 11 different endings. I have found, I think I, I think the most I've ever gotten was seven or eight of the different endings. The endings involve either becoming a book publisher or um, or starting a band and getting a record deal and stuff like that. Just because the game is so quirky and weird the more you play this game, uh, the different paths you take and depending on who you choose, that's the direction you can go. Like, you know, someone's a musician, so that's when you can get, do the route to get the record contract and stuff like that. So if you're not gonna play as that person, you play as someone else. There's a lot going on, very, very deeply involved with this game, and I absolutely love this game. You can do so much. I can go on and on about this game. Um, I will tell you that I'm giving Maniac Mansion an S. I think it's fantastic, I love it. And it's been a long time since I've beaten this game too. I might have to try playing it again. Don't even remember half the stuff to do or what to grab or what to use on what and stuff like that. It's gonna be a lot of fun playing this game again. Really quickly wanted to show this off. I just think it's interesting that more than half of the people who watch my channel 
aren't even subscribed. If you dig this style of video, I do these kind of videos all the time. Make sure you're subscribed. You don't want to miss out on any of these videos. I've always got a new one coming out soon, and a lot of times using your suggestions in the comments too, so make sure you drop those as well. Metal Mech looks way cooler than it plays, and that's unfortunate for me because I think the graphics look great. I think the idea that you play as this kind of robotic pod tank gunning thing that you can also, you know, get out of and move around and come back in. Hey, that's perfect. I mean, that's what Blaster Master is, right? Kind of. But you play as this slow, bipedal walking gunning machine. Which, again, on paper, sounds really, really cool. But when you play the game, it's really, really not as cool. And then you can also jump out, and you can shoot enemies that way, or get into areas that you couldn't as your mech. It's just, I don't know, it's just kind of slow moving, and not a whole lot of action. I mean, there's a ton of action involved, but not the kind that you want, I guess. No, I'm, you know, I'm putting this game as a D. I was hoping for and expecting more out of this game, but it's it's a D. It's still fun to look at. I mean, please still look at it, because the graphics are really cool. Uh, I, th I thought the music was fine. I just wish it was better. Pinball Quest and my love for video pinball. Now, i um, covered a few other pinball games uh, on this channel before in the past, and Pinball Quest is, um, is a favorite of mine uh, for a few reasons. Um, it has four modes, it has four, uh, four tables you can play as. Three of the four, just kind of like your basic pinball in a way, they're not bad, it's, it's cool to have on there too. But the reason to play this game is the RPG mode, where it actually has a storyline. Like, you know, the princess is kidnapped and you have to save her by nature of pinball. So you have to, you know, go through the doorways and defeat the enemies. Um, when you move to a different part of the map, you can actually move your flippers to where they should be so you can, um, you know, bop them out of the way and stuff like that. There's a lot going on and the fact that you can turn a pinball game into an RPG, have some RPG elements kind of, make it into an adventure game. Well, what a fun idea. How great is that? Pinball mechanics for NES they're not that great as far as getting the angles for like if you know pinball and know the angles and you know exactly where the ball is going to be on the flipper to hit it a certain way so it's going to go right to where you want to go doesn't do that so much for this game you just kind of have to hit the ball and hope for the best if you're off course you just have to try to hit it at a different angle or something like that um wish that part was better if it was better that i may even give this game an s but it's really really fun and a great game i, I still recommend it i'm gonna give this game an a Pro Sports Hockey might be the best hockey game there is on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now I know I can hear you already from over here. How are you supposed to compete with ice hockey, right? How are you supposed to compete with Blades of Steel? Now Blades of Steel is the measuring stick, no doubt about that at all. I'm not the biggest fan of Blades of Steel, but I also can't deny its popularity. Pro Sport Hockey was a later release game for the NES. It is a hockey game for the NES, and it plays so good. It has just that little bit of ice momentum when you're skating around. The passing's great, the shooting's great. I think this game's really good, especially for a hockey game, especially for a sports game on the NES. Uh, Jellico, as you've already seen from this list, has a ton of sports options. Why not hockey? And Pro Sport Hockey, if you haven't checked it out yet and you like, you know, hockey games, you like Blades of Steel and all that, want something different, want something new, has a different angle too, so instead of heading east to west, you're heading north and south. It's worth checking out. I'm going to put this game as a C. And it's not C in a bad way, it's a C in a good way. Racket Attack, because we've already had basketball and baseball four times over, and uh, even hockey and even football to an extent. Why not tennis? Well, not only does tennis have the stupidest scoring system of all time, even when I was in school, I liked playing tennis. I wasn't very good at it, but it was still fun. It was like, it was like live action pong. I like ping pong, so, you know, why not like tennis, you know? This game, the hit detection is way off. The hit detection is almost non-existent. Sometimes you're hitting the ball and it goes right through you. Sometimes you're swinging at the ball and it's nowhere to be found. And sometimes you swing at the ball and you're not even touching it, but it acts as a hit. This game is pretty, pretty, pretty terrible. And I'm gonna put this game as an F. It's the slow movement of the racket, I think. I mean, cause like NES tennis, black box tennis, that game's all right. We, we, we've played that one, of course. This one is just mm, not, not, no, come on, no, come on, man. 
Rampart's an interesting one if you've never played it before. When you first look at it, you're just like, war strategy something? No, no, no. This, this game has a couple of different rounds or modes or whatever. This game is a lot of fun. I'm going to tell you up front. You can play this game as a two-player as well, but I'm just going to show you the one-player mode here. So you choose your castle and you have your little area around your castle. So you put down your cannons. Those are going to be your firepower, right? So now you use those cannons to fight off the enemy. It can be the boats. It can be the ships. Sometimes if the ship docks, then they're going to release people or tanks or, you know, whatever things on the ground that you have to attack those guys too. And then at the end of the round, since the ships and everything are also fighting you and tearing down your walls, well, you have to build a solid wall around your castle, around your area. And during this time, you can build a solid wall around the other castles. And when you do that, you get more firepower more cannons. So then on the next round, you have extra firepower to defeat more enemies. And the round after that, you get more time to build, kind of like Tetris in a little bit, as you can see, around more stuff to get more cannons, to get more firepower. And it's just going to keep going and going and going. Now imagine this on a two-player when you're fighting each other. Oh, that's great. Love that. Now they have this game. I played a lot of this for the Super Nintendo more than anything. The Super Nintendo version I thought was fantastic. The NES version, super fantastic as well. It's actually, it, it plays very, very well on the NES. I love this game a lot, and I'm going to give this game an A. Robo Warrior, if I took every Nintendo game ever and ranked them from best to worst, Robo Warrior might be dead center in the middle. It's not the super best game in the world, but it's also not the worst game in the world. As if they made Bomberman Adventure or something for the NES. It's a little bit like that, because you're a robot, sure, and you bomb stuff, okay, and when you bomb stuff, stuff moves out of your way and it has you clear a path and defeat more enemies and use more bombs. If you're too close to the bomb, you take damage. You can pick up, uh, you know, weapons and fire whatever items along the way to help you with your journey. Again, it's the most right down the middle. I don't want to say the word mediocre because mediocre, even though mediocre means average, it, it still has a negative connotation to it. It's okay. It's just not great, but it's not bad. This game is the perfect rental <laughs> back when we could rent video games. And like this tier list, I'm going to put it right at C, right in the middle. If you've never played Shatterhand before for the NES, after this video, find a way to play Shatterhand for the NES. It's one of the best action games on there. You have your Batman, you have your Ninja Gaiden, you have your Shatterhand. This game is this game is exceptionally good, I think. Great action game. You run around and you punch people with your Shatterhand. You have like, you know, your, your punching thing. And if you're kind of hitting it a bunch of times, you're just throwing these just lobbing stiff punches <laughs> to defeat enemies, defeat walls. Uh, I think the graphics are great, the sound is great, the music's great, it's the, the perfect, it was like, it's it's a great game. It's like the perfect guide for like, here's how to make a great Nintendo game. Perfect level of difficulty, might die a few times along the way, but the more you play it, the more you get better at it. Of course, I mean, that's kind of how video games work, right? You also pick up other items too, and there's also times that you can cash in your, you get these coins, and you can cash in your coins to get extra health, or if you don't have enough money for it, you can't get it. So, I mean, you gotta pick up those coins. It's not, I mean, it's optional, but if you want your stuff, you gotta pick them up. So I like that about this game too. You know, it's not like other games where you just find random health all over the place. For this one, it's like, hey, you want extra health? You, you, you took some damage, did you? Well, you gotta pay extra for that. You gotta pay a premium, man, I'm telling you. I even like the fact that you can kind of like hop up on the chain link fence. You didn't have to have that in this game. You could have just climbed a wall. You could have just like, you know, wall jumped or something like that, but no, there's chain link fences around there. So you can just, you just kind of jump up and cling onto them and uh, attack enemies that way too. I love it. This game's beautiful. It's called Shatterhand. I'm giving this game an S. You should check it out if you haven't done so already. It's fun. Totally Rad was during a time where Attitude sold tickets, I guess. The game's called Totally Rad. Uh, the box art means nothing about the game. I do like the fact that it has the multi-level scrolling for the background, and you have your shots, you can charge up your shots, power them up, so you can, you know, blast a bunch of shot all at once, you know, like it's a stronger attack. Only whenever you jump or can't jump or whatever, then you can't use it, so you have to, like, make sure you're on the same level, and of course, that's the first level, you're going up and down hills all the time, so that's kind of annoying. It plays decent. It's all right. I like the colors. I like what this game's throwing down. I'll put this game as a B. Wampum is one of the best 
platformers on the NES. And I'm not just saying that for the sake of saying that. Mario 3 is usually crowned king for the best platformers. Um, you know, I put Tiny Toon Adventures up there as well. And Wampum, definitely one of the best. It really is. It has the downward thrust or upward thrust motion that you can do to defeat your enemies, or you can just stab them with your spear. After the brief kind of first stage tutorial style stage, then you can choose which level you want to go to to uh, carry on with the rest of your game. It's, this game is super, super, super good. I like this game quite a bit. Fun to come back to, perfect level of difficulty, I think, for playing Nintendo games. It's unfortunate too, this game is the sequel to another game in Japan. Now in Japan, it's known as something else, It's but they, they reskinned it as Wampum to bring out in America. This game's super awesome. This game's an A. What about the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles? Now this game is based on a TV show of the time. I never watched it, but my wife was a huge fan of it. I think we actually have one of the DVD box sets here. And there's a few other Indiana Jones games for the NES. A lot of them, not all that great. This one's actually really good. Well, I think it's better than the other ones anyway. You have your running, you can attack. It's terrible because once you, the first time you get hit, you lose your item, you lose your whip. So it's like, ah, you can't be Indiana Jones without your whip, right? Well, I guess you can be because you get to be. This is Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Super fun game. I'll, I'll give this game a B. I think it's pretty cool. Whole lot of great games from Jellico on this list. Some great platformers, some great sports games, a little bit of everything.